sleep, I don't wanna cry, I don't wanna leave you lay on your phone Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our uh, Fireside Cast's coverage of RGL6's Season 15. Tonight, we have the intermediate lower bracket finals between uh, Classic Mix Up, the fake one, not the OG <laughs> one, and um, and uh, Six Hate Club. Uh, mm -hmm. Tonight uh, on casting is me, M17, joined by Bong Gripper with Pika on production. Bong Gripper, how are you? Are you excited for tonight's match? Yeah, it should be good, right? I mean, the last match that we casted with Plastic Mixup was... Uh, it was honestly such a banger. It was probably one of my favorite casts to do. Uh, so, I, I know they have a lot of ringers with them, but it should still be a really good match to watch tonight. Yeah, speaking of those, the next things we'll do is we'll go down the list of the roster. Why don't you start with uh, Six Hate Club for tonight? Yeah, 100%. So, uh, on Pocket Scout, we actually have Sempar. Flank Scout, we have Johnny. Pocket Soldier is going to be Chocolate for tonight. Your Roma Soldier is going to be 2x4. On um, demo is JJ. And Medic is Fireside's own number one rocker. Yes, and on the side of the Fake Classic mix-up, we have... Uh, it's going to be Jebediah Townhouse. We'll just call him Jebediah for tonight. 225 at yahoo.com. Come on, don't yeah. forget the name. Okay, my bad. Jebediah is going to be <laughs> on Combo Scout as a sub. Um... Uh, Flank Scout is TLM, who is ringing from Bro Moment. Pocket Soldier is Steb. Romer is Amity, who is selling for Paul. Demo is Aiden, and Medic is Windows XP. And looking at these rosters, like you had said, there's a quite a bit of replacements on the side of the Classic Mix-Up roster. They have their Pocket Soldier, their Demo, and their Med are all the same, but... You know, they have a ringer and two subs. Now, granted, Amity's played for them, you know, for a few matches in the season. So I don't think the Amity Romer thing is going to be Amity. They're pretty comfortable playing with Amity. But mm. um, in terms of, yeah, but in terms of, you know, two other players, that's still two players subbing. And I know normally um, Cyrus, who Jebedee is subbing for, normally Cyrus calls. So I think that's going to change the rosters up or that's going to change potentially how they play quite a bit we'll see how how stuff happens yeah for sure um i, I think it's going to change a little bit for them but not too much i think that the uh the base of the roster is pretty stable just you know in terms of just uh playing tf2 and knowing where the team wants to be and stuff like that like all of these players that are ringing are pretty adept uh in tf2 in their own right as well so i don't think they're going to be too much of a, a variable factor in tonight's gameplay but um, one thing to report as well, I was incorrect. Uh, the flank scout for Six Hate Club is not Sempar. It is actually going to be Sunshine for tonight uh, and Johnny on Combo Scout. So, uh, you know, just wanted to make sure that we got that covered as well. Um, I know there was a lot of roster mix-ups on uh, both of these teams as well, but still, obviously, like, loser, loser bracket finals. This is ster still, like, very, like, a important match for both of these teams just to make sure that they're uh you know making their way into grand finals obviously right the stakes could not be higher for these two teams right now yeah just like you said loser of this game is out in third place for the season mm. and winner of this game goes on to grand finals facing zug jug and one thing i would like to point out is the fake classic mix was the first seed for this season and six hate club was the second seed so zug jug actually actually uh upset um the fake classic mix up in the upper racket finals and they are going to get a one map advantage in the grand finals so even if you win tonight's match you still have a, a long uh uphill battle ahead of you but it's definitely not over for either of these teams i know um you know even though um excuse me six eight club has uh you know some different scout uh roster positioning and stuff uh, I know they've had their, their explosives consistent, and I'm pretty sure from what I've seen at least, they really like to play off of their explosive classes anyways, both soldiers and their demo. So those are definitely the players to watch on 6 Hate Club. And in terms of classic mix-up, it's probably going to be Amity and seeing how um, Jebediah plays as a different combo scout, because I'm assuming he's going to be, from what I've heard, he's going to be calling for um, mix-up, and they've only had a bit of practice with him, so it's maybe not going to be ideal. But yeah, definitely. Yeah. And like, I, and you know, the big mix up for classic mix up specifically is having, uh, instead of Paul having Amity as well, 
Um, and like you said before, uh, classic mix-up has been very, been very defined by the uh, the pace of their explosives, right? Like how fast their explosives uh, are taking the mids, taking these fights as well. There are a lot of the big playmakers in it as well. But uh, you know, I think the, also the big difference between Amity as well being the soldier on uh, classic mix-up is going to be TLM. Uh, on the scout as well. Uh, you know, like, I, I know just from knowing the teams as well that Cyrus himself was a very influential role on that team as a whole and just sort of helped the team pace himself. So I'm very interested to see uh, what the differences are tonight, right? Like, what's what's going to actually be the change in classic mix-up? Obviously, map one, we're starting on Reckoner, which I'm going to be honest, is not the most uh, normal map to be starting on for your playoffs maps and stuff like that. But, you know, maybe trying to catch the other team off guard, maybe trying to check uh, Six Hate Club on just their map knowledge in general, picking Reckoner. Um, I, I just think it'll be a very interesting match and especially an interesting first map to set the pace for the rest of these, uh, this best of three. Yeah, no, it's going to be extremely interesting. I wouldn't be surprised if we see like an almost completely different classic mix up just based off of that calling. And of course, Reckoner is definitely a, a less seen map, especially to, um, you know, some of the older players. It's only been played in a few seasons in North America. So even though it is uh, mostly like a European map is where you're going to see it a lot. Um, in terms of other maps, though, map two is going to be CP Gullywash. And if there's a Decider map, that would be CP Sunshine. Um, so, yeah, definitely some interesting maps to play. Very, All three of them are extreme. Well, maybe not Sunshine and Reckoner. They're pretty similar, in fact, made by the same map maker. But Gully Wash is definitely completely different from uh, Sunshine and Reckoner. So I expect to see some large differences on these two maps. But I think in terms of, like, changing up what you've seen before, if you've seen any of Six Hate Club play this season, it's probably going to be a similar play style, to be honest, just because I know they're supposed to set the pace of the game and they're really the... A lot of them have some decent experience. You know, both Jello Jiggler and Chocolate are quite experienced, and 2x4 doesn't have that... You know, probably has about as much experience as uh, some of the other more experienced players in this game, such as TLM and Number One Rocker on mid. But, you know, it's probably going to be a similar game plan. But comparing that to Classic Mix Up, I still have no idea what we're going to see. Um, I know Amity's a really solid soldier, but uh, besides that, like, I haven't really seen much of Amity play, and I really haven't seen Slanty on, or excuse me, Jebediah on Combo Scout. I've only seen Jebediah play Flank Scout in main a bit, but, you know, this is going to be a bit different. No, definitely. Um, you know, on top of that as well, it's just, it's going to be a weird map to focus on specifically for just, like, fundamentals. Uh, being it on Reckoner, right, like, this, like, as you said, is more of like an EU map. It's sort of new to us NA players, especially for the players that are currently in IM, right? I mean, they've been only in IM for how many seasons, depending on what the player is, but um, this is a map that a lot of people don't have experience in, and uh, you know, I think it'll be very interesting to see how the team sort of digests this information on top of it as well. Um, yeah, I believe we're just we have all six players in the server all ready to go. Um, but yeah, I mean, what are your predictions going into this? Just just for myself at least, I personally think that this map could really go up in the air. Uh, this map was, if I want to make sure here, it was picked by. Um, classic mix-up here on Reckoner. They're, they feel very confident on this map, even with the Ringers as well, but uh, what what is your prediction just in terms of uh, this map for sure, and overall the set between these players? Yeah, it's good to hear your predictions. I am... I'm, I'm so unsure, to be honest. I can't, I can't say for sure. I... I have a feeling it's going to be the first game is going to be a very close game on Reckoner. Um, I'm not sure which team to favor, honestly, because I just don't... I think Classic the classic Mixup is just such a wild card with their completely different game style playing. Yeah. I will be predicting that... Uh, I think I'm going to say that Classic Mixup is barely going to squeak out map one. Um, Six Hate Club is going to convincingly win map two. And then I think Six Hate Club is probably going to win map three, but it's going to be another close one. So I think it's going to be an overall 2-1 uh, map score for Six Hate Club. But I don't think... Classic Mixup is definitely not out of it yet. I mean, they replaced it with very solid... They, uh, the players they have to replace are all solid. And, you know, it's definitely a different game plan or a game style from what... 
um, the six hate club is going to have been seeing in their, you know, in the rest of their scrims and matches or their, yeah, their matches is throughout the season because they've uh, faced off twice and six hate club lost both times. But of course, classic mix up with a different roster is just going to be a completely different one. Uh, or it's just going to be a completely different beast, excuse me. And Six Hate Club lost to them on Snake, Water, and Process. So neither of those maps oh. are going to be being played tonight. And I am very curious. I'm not sure what to see, but we are going live here. And we're getting right into this first mid. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the things to look on for Reckoner are very different than just like a normal uh, 5 CP map, right? I mean, obviously it's very dependent off of the Soldier Bombs. Just because it's uh, a 6 map that we uh, NA has not played a lot of, so, you know, obviously it's going to be defined off of the damage on the Soldier Bombs as well. As we see Step going in really early for a really early Soldier Bomb, gets number one down to only 12 HP, and number one dies to spam as well, from just the spam from uh, the demo as well. But Windows dying on the back end, I'm not sure if that was from a bomb, but just from the spam overall. That's going to be Windows and the last of, uh, rest of Plastic makes him falling, and it's going to be TLM falling extremely late, only on 12 HP before he falls down, and... Still, the first mid very defined as well. It felt like it was a little uncoordinated from the side of Plastic Mixup, just in terms of that single soldier bomb. They didn't really have that coordination going into it, but um, now with the second uh, second hold as well. But 2 by 4 into the lower, going for the second of Windows. He gets one, he gets Aiden, which is a really nice kill to get, but doesn't get the med as well, so not the exact goal that he was looking for, but an amazing find looking in for, uh, you know, 6 hit cold looking into second right now. Yeah, Six Hate Club is going to be pressuring. It's going to be an even Uber situation. Here comes Chocolate through the uh, cargo door here. He's going to do a bomb. Isn't really going to get much damage. It's going to take a lot in return. But a huge, a bunch of damage from Jello Jiggler. And that's really uh, hampering Plastic Mixing ability to hold. And they're actually just going to have to leave all because of that damage off of Jello Jiggler and the space he created. But something important I really want to know is 2x4. Um, with his counter aggression, he absolutely demolished the Classic Mixup uh, mm. on mid. He got a 3k. I'm um, getting, I believe it was both scouts and windows, which is very huge for him. But here is the pressure from 6 Hate Club trying to get some stuff going. Here two comes a big bomb from 2x4, oh. does a ton of damage to windows, but is not able to get the kill. There's a quick resup. Aiden does get that kill, and already Aiden is trying to go for just a little bit of peeking aggressively here in the lobby. Is not going to get too aggressive, I don't think. Looks like he's just trapping off Shutter, and Amity is peeking in lower, but I don't think any real counter stack is going to happen, and we're just going to go into... Actually, as I say that, Amity goes right back in. Humongous damage. Chocolate does end up by Stev with the long-range spam, and it's going to be a 5v5, but with the Sunshine spawn spawner, um, I think 6 Egg Club is just going to pressure right back in from lobby after they clear these traps, and we'll see what they want to do. Yeah, I mean, 2x4 over there, like, overall, this has been so damn aggressive. Like, you saw on that mid as well, it's also looking for that sack as well. And almost looking, it looks like he had that sack confirmed as well. Windows did not get the respawn time. And if that rocket did hit, he would have gotten the drop onto Windows XP, but, um, you know, regardless, that did not happen. So now we're going to be going into sort of a last hold scenario. Both teams have deep maneuvers right now. Um, blue team right now is working their way into main lobby right now, trying to find something, whether it's the gun or just for a second as well, but, um, so more of a neutral position right now than we would have expected it off of that momentum from the first mid as well, right? I mean, they had the med dead, their own, my, their own med died as well, but, uh, the ability to barrel into second to get more out of it, but as I say that, West of Blue Team 6 Hate Club, they're bullying their way in through the right door, doorway as well, looking for this gun or looking for anything else that they can. Johnny in as well. They're getting the spam under this gun from the demo, but not, the gun hasn't gone down yet. Still on the beef block and load shots, it's going to make that even harder as well. So, um, still more of a neutral last hold situation. The neutral last holds feel a little bit different than how they would normally on a, uh, you know, a last hold normally. Uh, just any sort of uh, 5 CP that we've seen similar to this, but choosing to back out of lobby now. They're choosing to sort of collect themselves, get Jell or Jiggler up. You don't want to have your demo dead, especially on these last pushes, but you definitely want to have some sort of solid plan going into Reckoner specifically, right? I mean, this is uh, an NA map uh, adopted up from the EUs after all. We don't know this as well. We haven't played this for as many seasons. You don't have Mr. Kobe 1920 and all these demo reviews to look over for how to power the this, but they're using the Uber into last. And an actual drop from uh, number one rocker. Stev just gets a kill. Aiden gets a, a trap kill into Johnny and all in from the uh, side of 6 hate. <laughs> Jello Jiggler gets a huge 2k with the stickies oh and God. with the pipes onto 
Jebediah, oh my goodness, that is going to help them out a lot. And it's still going to be, it's probably going to get about a, it's going to be about a 20% Uber ad on the side of 6K Club. But Seb's already working his way out here, although as we say that, 2x4 does hide in lobby. He's able to kill Aiden. He's already going for the last point, but the 2v1 is there in Amity and... I believe that was uh, TLM are going to claim that kill up. They're going to hard build now, but they're at about a 30% Uber diss at. And 6 Hit Club, I believe, was building. And it looks like they still are building. They are going to be probably going off this 30% Uber at because they don't have much time left. They finally got some sort of, uh, you know, good stack play going there. But that was all off the back of their med dropping. So maybe that was a blessing in disguise. Um... They look like they're going to pressure out top left here. Jello Jiggler is posturing to use through this door. And here comes the Uber. He's going to jump through. Is going to trap off TLM. But TLM barely gets through with that huge health pull on heavy. Uh, Johnny baiting the cap. 2x4 gets a kill onto Steb. Amity is still alive. There's a lot of cap time. Johnny gets a kill. TLM gets another kill onto 2x4. It's now a 5 on 4. And uh, Windows does have Uber for last night mix up. So I don't think he's going to be holdable. Although it looks like 16 is going to try. Tons of damage onto oh, Aiden. Aiden shot one it. kill. And they actually kill. Cap? They capped at the end of that as well. Over. That's crazy. I mean, the, the super aggressive bomb in from Chocolate, uh, just making a bunch of damage and a bunch of space. He got a pick and brought the heavy down to super low HP, but um, the rest of the players able to flood enough of that. You can tell that Classic Mix have just sort of wanted to play for the reset there, but instead, having their point capped up now done uh, down 1-0 on this mid. We're gonna have to look and see what they do on this mid. And they're extremely early, way faster than Jello, Jello Jiggler is, who's gonna get a lot of uh, 6 off early. Not a bunch of damage off of that, except on the number 1 Rocker, who's brought down to a only 80 HP right now, but sort of a neutral mid. Rest of Classic makes up already bombing into the enemy team side. It's TLM and uh, Amity bossing their way into the enemy team side, and it's sort of just a fit this fight now. Windows is still up right now, and he's going to be the last alive on the enemy team side, going for the taunt, and they're trying to pet the medic right now, making his uh, spawn time as long as possible, and he's finally going to kill mine. So now, Windows XP on a 50 second respawn, that means that number one rocker, after staying alive from this mid, is going to have full Uber at pushing him to last, and they're probably going to get the second for free as well. They definitely will be getting the second for free. There's going to be no contesting from Custom Mix. Well, as I said, it's just a little bit of spam from Amity, but not going to commit for anything. It's getting pressure out a bit, but it's pretty safe uh, with a very close story, which soldiers can definitely use to protect themselves. There is a gun going up on the side of TLM. We'll Sniper see how that is. Yeah, Jebediah is all the way in here in lobby at a nasty sight line. It looks like 2x4 has not spotted the sniper. He finally does, but Jebediah does with the shot or not get anything. Looks like here comes the Uber out of top left again, although there's no scout except Johnny's kind of late on that Uber. The gun finally goes down, but almost all the Uber was used and only a bit of damage on the stab really happened. 6 8 Club did get control of this right side, but they actually have Sunshine and 2x4 on the left, pressuring them in really hard. Although, as I say, that Sunshine goes down 2x4 is extremely low. Johnny is pretty low and caught over here by Amity. Here comes a bomb from Chocolate. It's not going to grab anything, and that's three down. And 6 8 Club are going to back their way up, and there's no more gun. And Classic Mixup is just going to go out very quickly. Amity was trying to chase, but realizes that there's just not enough health and... You know, Amity's just alone, so it's going to be a backup onto second. Looks like they're going to stack to try to, I guess, push pretty quickly, although there's no players to deny. They do have a 20% Uber ad, which it looks like they are going to take. They catch Sunshine in lower. Ooh. They're already pushing through the lower door, but here comes a big bomb from, uh, excuse me, that's Chocolate, and he does get the force onto Windows. 2 by 4 gets a kill on TLM on the flank, and he's behind. Both soldiers from 6 Hate Club are behind onto second and last. 2 by 4 is going for the cap. Chocolate is in lower here. Aiden is trying to lead back to um, second. It looks like a lot of the team players from 6 Hate Club are classic mix up back up to second. They do grab one soldier, but, uh, excuse me, Amity goes back in and everybody else from 6 Hate Club is in this uh, toxic area. Sunshine gets a kill on this step, trying to go for a flank, and 6 Hate Club barges right on in. Aiden with a nice <laughs> air pipe onto, uh, excuse me, onto Chocolate, but is not going to get the kill with the help of Chocolate's teammates. And that's going to allow 6 Hate Club to already cap, and they have that 30% Uber, and they're just walking right on in. They didn't even use they want it. They're already looking at the last point as well. They get a lot of cap time early, and they're just recognizing their Uber way better than the rest of Classic Mix Up is. They use that mid, that Uber on mid, and now it's going to be on 6 Hate Club to cap this point right now. Uber is finally gotten by Windows XP, and he uses that out immediately to find any kills that they can. They find number one Rocker and 2x4, so having the med dead is super amazing. You can see Sunshine looking to last, he does not get it. So now, 
it is going to be the rest of the class that makes up barrel barreling their way into second right now. It looks a little scary there, right? I mean, they used their Uber into mid super, super early and didn't get much off of it, especially not getting the med kill as well. I mean, a number one rocker was super willing to play out of this mid as well and just looking for his own life as well, so. Uh, now it's on class that to figure out what they want to do here looking into mid. It's step bombing through early, looking for any sort of damage that he can get, but he's not going to find anything in the face of Sunshine Sniper, and he's not going to get anything but a we nice bow! Oh, what? He got the crossbow across the map on number one rocker. That is a huge play from him as well. So now... You know, looking into mid for classic mix-up, obviously you gotta recollect, get your heals, get your uber, but there's no med now for the side of classic mix-up. They lost in one rocker from just being the slim margins from that sort of wall guy arrow just barreling into mid. But, yeah, yeah it's, it's scary now. It's Sunshine only up. He's the only real last chance for uh, six hate club on this mid. He misses his fully charged meat shot. Doesn't get anything else. He maybe gets like, a little shot onto Windows, but Windows is not going down to that. It's playing very, very slow in sort of the barrels area, sort of the cargo area. And now Red Team, they're making their way into mid right now, and they have all the space to do so. Yeah, Red Team is actually going incredibly aggressive with their 35% Uber. Here comes Slanty. He's going to pick off Chalky. There's an aggressive use from Aiden. They're just going to decide to pick off uh, Sunshine on Sniper. They have a three-player ad. Um, it looks like, excuse me, that's still TLM capping on mid, and it looks like um, Six Hate Club has a very big Uber range. They're going to try to take it, actually. Johnny! A lot of damage on the Johnny. He's barely alive. Step gets a ton of damage. He does get the force, and that's the only kill it looks like they're going to get because Six Hate Club is very far back. They're now, running to Toxic. Yeah, a bunch of uh, juggling from, excuse me, Aiden. Amity goes a bomb, but gets air shot by 2x4. By uh, six Hate Club is just pushing all the way back in, and because uh, Toxic Mixup is down 2, they're going to have to back all the way up onto second. They do have about a 30% Uber ad, and it looks like they're going to have enough players to spawn. Well, as I say that, Six Hate Club is already trying to pressure through Toxic. 2x4 gets a kill onto TLM, and no trade in return because Chocolate Dude. is there to save him. And that's probably going to mean that Six or er, uh, Six Eight Club won't have to worry about this Uber because I don't think Classic Mixup will push. Although, as I say that, actually, Classic Mixup has decided they are pushing through Toxic here with Jebediah as well. They want to use this on Jebediah, possibly, right? I mean, the Ubers are going to be evening out really quickly now, so this is kind of scary if you're taking this too slowly. And it's going to be Ombin to recognize that you know these Ubers are going to be somewhat even at this point. MD bombing through early as the rest of uh, Classic Mixup has been making their way onto mid right now, and they're losing A and extremely early even before the Ubers are coming out. They must recognize now that this is an even uber scenario and that losing one and losing stat as well is going to mean that they're going to have to run back to second right now, which they choose to do. Uh, so now it's in the rest of 6 Hate Club to figure out what they want to do here. They're pressuring their way into Toxic, they're pressuring their way into Barrels, and they have got this second mid, you know, the second point on lock right now. And the rest of the classes mix up choosing to leave towards the last. They don't have any super early off classes, so maybe not a chance to get a level 3 gun up, but you have to figure something out as the rest of uh, Six Hate Club, including Chocolate and Johnny, are barely on the way to the last. They die early as well as Sunshine, but they do get the use out. Use out extremely early from number one rocker just to try to save players, but now this is full diss ad for Six Hate Club. This is up to uh, Classic Mixup as obviously the fake one to make their way into second right now and look for anything. 2x4 looking for a salvage, uh, only gets damage onto Aiden, doesn't get anything else. So now Six Hate Club pretty dominantly has his second hold. But the force coming out from Windows, just to the scout as well. The scout focusing the med as well is going to lead Windows to forcing on only 30 HP. Uh, and they want to look for anything else that they can get right now. Obviously they were forced in a second, but they want to get into mid right now. They want to look for more. But being challenged immediately, almost looking like sort of a mid fight right now, is going to be classic mix up. But that's a huge bomb from Stab! Getting the kill onto number one rocker really, really deep into the barrels area. And it's only going to be Sunshine on the rest of classic mix up, looking for any sort of salvage they can get. He gets Sunshine. Uh, well, Sunshine going down actually, but doesn't get much else on top of that. One player living at 1 HP and getting both from Windows is going to mean that Classic Mixup has his Uber Ad to work with, and now it is their ball to work their way into second to, uh, with. Yeah, they're finally pushing through cargo here, and they have about a 60% uh, Uber advantage. They get their flank through the other doors, and that's just going to instantly pressure Six Hate Club out. They try to 
sneak a little bit, try to potentially go for a recontest, but they decided better against it. And they're backing up all the way to last. They're going to try to set up a sentry, and they do have a sniper on the side of Sunshine, but I don't think they're going to have enough time for a gun. The soldiers from Classic Mix-Up already took control of Lobby here. Although, as I say that, yeah, they're really spamming down this gun. Johnny's not able to get it to level 2. Here comes the use from Classic Mix-Up. They do get the gun, which was only level 1, and they're trying to collapse all the way on this right side. Bunch of damage going back and forth from both teams. It's going to be a trade of multiple players, but it's definitely going the way of 6 hate club. Uh, Classic Mix-Up is down 3. 6 hate club is only down 1. Step is about to die to oh. Johnny cleaning him up. And Windows died pretty early there as well. And that's going to lead it to 6 hate club taking second for free. Amity is hiding in this lower area. Amity is going through the river under area. Actually decides better of it. Bombs right in onto number one rocker. Very low and does get the force onto number one rocker. Oh that's my a gosh. huge, huge salvage play there from them. And that's going to, uh, I think 6 hate was still going to push here. But down one player and all that damage, including TLM getting a pick on the 2 by 4 they might think better against it. Although, because Cluster wasn't it. holding the doors, yeah, they just broke right through. And it's still just a 5 and 5 fight here. Yeah, 5 5 5 right now. I mean, obviously, Classic Mixup has a super ad. It's not going to be gotten in the time that they're fighting this mid, but Bob going out early from Steb is going to mean that they, the rest of the 6 hate club is choosing to chill now on their second. They're building up their Uber immediately. Johnny and number one rocker are going to be building on their own bats, uh, trying to get this Uber as soon as possible, and they're evening this out pretty well as well. I mean, Classic Mixup, they have their Uber in just about two seconds, but. I don't know if it's going to be super actionable for the rest of Jedi Townhouse and Aiden. They want to use it immediately, but at the same time, the Uber is going to be gone from number one rocker. He saves all of his players, and 2x4 gets a pick onto Amity. So a super nice pick to have early, and Aiden is going to be extremely caught. 2x4 is going to die in the back end, but that's only a soldier dead. And you have the uh, Demo Man dead, so the rest of 6 Head Club is choosing. They want to be in this mid. They want this mid right now. They find the pick onto Step as well, looking for sort of, some sort of a salvage, and the rest of this. Uh, plus mix up, they're counting their losses, right? They realize they lost their demo on that. They're giving it the demo for its bunt, so they have in here dropping on second, but still, that is a very dominant uh, mid retake for classic mix up, or not over a six hit club, mind you. Yeah, classic mix up just wasn't reading the Uber as well enough. They didn't realize how small of their Uber ad it was, and number one rocket just had a better counter using that allowed just the picks to go in the favor of classic mix up. It's just decided to turn, it's just turned into an even Uber situation here. Both teams not really wanting to do anything, but as soon as Uber happens, here comes the pressure from Six Hate Club. Did get juggled in, did get a kill onto TLM and some damage onto Windows, but that trade kill is really going to help, and I don't think classic mix up is going to try to go for any sort of counter stack. It's just Amity watching Toxic, though. Yep, Amity just goes for a little bit of a, just a little peek to get some info, but no real stack attempt here. And we're going to go right back into another stalemate with a potential off class, maybe? I don't know. I haven't seen, we haven't seen really any off classes from Six Hate Club outside of last. And I would have been surprised because I'm pretty sure Sunshine likes to go sniper, but I guess oh, he not. does. Yeah. Yeah. I, and also, the rest of uh, Six Hate Club is just needed more posture into this crate sort of area instead of going for the. Uh, the toxic pressure the only person they have a toxic is going to be chocolate pressuring uh sunshine lurking in lower but they are really choosing to bring their combo to this specific area now we're taking the toxic right now looking for this sort of spam out and it's going to be step finding sunshine sort of beating forward just a crazy either catch out rocket and they also find two by four as well it's a major pick to have so now two down for the rest of six hate club it's going to be classic mix is going to be one to get into mid immediately Amity is not going to be able to get through immediately, and it's going to be Jellicle trying to hold down these doorways, just as the devil himself, right? I mean, but nothing immediately, and they get their players back. The players are rolling out now for the rest of Six Eight Club. They get their scout and their soldier that were the ones dying beforehand, but now back to this sort of even scenario. So it's really up to Six Eight Club figuring out what they want to do in this scenario, right? I mean. On the 5 CP mouse that we see from North America, right, is very defined from what the soldiers want to do. 2x4 getting through now, he's going to be in the skybox, almost getting air shot, but it's looking down on windows. Gets one nice rocket on him, only bringing windows down to uh, 70 HP. Now they get anything else, but a lot of other feet kills coming in as well. It's going to be Sunshine 2x4 again, the two dead for the side of 6 Hay Club, as the rest of 6, the rest of six Hay Club is retreating to mid right now, so. On to Classic Mix up to figure out what they want to do. Amity bombing it extremely early. He's going to find one rocket on the down one rocker, but it's not going to be positioned to get any more damage off of that. So, still even scenario, just as I was saying almost like 30 seconds earlier. 2x4 and the rest of the uh, 6 8 Club bossing their way in through this toxic area. It's going to be a Jebediah and the rest of the scouts and soldiers 
trying to hold the space here for the rest of the 6k club and they do find one amity is taken down extremely early but chocolate dead as well as those two soldiers dead now for the rest of the 6k club now classic mix up they need to see if they can break this curse they can make it to mid in the time that they need to to actually do something, right? I mean, they're so slow with these doorways that so they're just loosening through. I'm letting this little so soldier bomb through. But that's stab! Getting through now, getting the kill into Jello Jiggle. Jell that's a demo dead right now. Number one rocker using that Uber extremely early, and Windows using the Uber way, way later. On to Jebediah as well as so a Jebediah gonna be chasing forward, looking for anything that he has. Could be Sunshine, the last caught alive on mid here, looking for anything that he can get on the bottom side of the plane as well. He might go down, but he might get TL him. He does get TL him in the back of it. Gets traded out himself, but it's a very nice kill to find. And then on the, on the back of that, where is the 6 k club? Bear the way back in the mid right now. They have this mid right now. Chocolate is taken down extremely late from the, the uh, pipe or the spam from Aiden. And it's a fist fight on top and on bottom of point right now. It's going to leave three dead for classic mix-up. Gemini finding another. It's going to be number one rocker going down extremely late for 6 k club. And the cap going down, so this is not going to be a reset or anything like that. And now Windows, with number one rocker dead, going to be going out to 60, almost 70% here before number one rocker is spawned. So now, complete inverse of the situation that we've seen of, uh, you know, 68 club trying to push their way into second. It's going to be them cowering on their last, getting Johnny up on the gun and looking for any sort of stability that they can. Yeah, finally, uh, Toxic Mixup managed to break that hole, but it was just a brute force bomb from Steb through the Toxic Doorway, which, you know, normally you want to just pressure the other doors, the ones that aren't being watched, but here comes the aggressive Uber in from Toxic Mixup. They're getting a bit juggled by the Sentry. They do kill it quickly, and it looks like they're going to try to get any other kills they can. Actually, they decide to just go for some cap time. Not really anything huge here. Players from both teams low. Amity gets the first kill onto Chocolate. Steb is pretty healthy as well, and he's going to go right back in for another bomb on the side, pressuring, doing a ton of damage and drawing a ton of eyes, although TLM went down early. Uh, Jebediah gets a kill into Sunshine, but two picks on the side of Six Hay Club and Number One Rock gets Uber. They're going to go for it and clean up Steb, but Windows XP does manage to leave, and I believe that's Amity spawning. Is No, Amity was uh, alive in the fight and is just going to back up with uh, back up safely, and Windows meets his spawner in TLM. And it's going to be an inevitable, I believe it's going to be, yes, yeah, another even situation here on second. But this time, uh, Classic Mixup has mid, and we're going to see how they try to pressure. Yeah, completely even Ubers, right? I mean, this is complete adverse from what we saw before. The scores still are still 1-0 in the side of 6 Hate Club. They got that point extremely early, and now this map is looking like sort of a stalemate, right? Like, similar to what we'd see on... Uh, a snake water official, right? With just uh, people poking and prodding, not wanting to take too many losses, not wanting to commit too hard. Plus, it mix up with that. I mean, Windows taking a pipe as well, so uh, slowing down a little bit to get the mini pack on mid, and they want to figure out what they were doing here on the sack tent. Yeah, here comes a bomb from uh, Steb. He's going to get a, a little bit Ugh. of damage onto a few soldiers, is not going to grab anything else. Johnny does clean that up. And there's a couple low people on six hate club two by or on classic mix up two by four gets the kill on the TLM that's two down. Let's see if Sac uh, excuse me six hate club is able to pressure through. Jell Jiggler comes through the side door. Big bomb from Amity trying to stuff that. He's actually able to pretty successfully stuff. Although as we say that there was an aggressive Uber from Jebediah, but he barely he finally gets the Uber force right at the end. Ooh. He is gonna go down, but that was a very big milk there on the side of the number one rocker, and that's gonna extremely help him. Uh, that's gonna help flats. him a lot. Amity does get a kill into Chocolate, oh. which is going to help, but uh, 6 Hate Club with the overall health and positioning that with that better Uber, they're just going to pressure them out, and that's going to lead to uh, a mid successfully retaken by 6 Hate Club, and we're back to an even Uber situation, and again, 6 Hate Club is um, uh, uh, on the forward foot. They have to do something here. They've gone for that 2x4 uh, speed shot through the cargo area twice now, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see it again, but what they really should do is definitely try something different. Oh, maybe you could try an off-class, but even just some sort of different sack attempt besides the thing they've done uh, every time, is they already have 2x4 peeking into toxic, so that's a promising sign. Yeah, definitely, and I mean, like, you can go for the speed shot over and over again, go for this uh, uh, crates pressure as well, but 
you know, lower is such a tantalizing spot to bomb off of, right? You have these giant walls to bomb off of, so 2x4 going in through the lower area, just like I said, missing the air shot onto the scout that he was looking for, Chocolate finding a spam kill, but it's going to be 2x4 cleaned up, rest of, rest of uh, 6 can Club looking for something else, it's going to be Chocolate taking down the counter regression, the uber used that extremely early from Jebediah, looking for the force on to number 1, number 1 is going to end up using Zebra only at 25 HP, but they're going to get... Jebediah and Windows is going to be left leaving on the second right now, so even though the, both of the Ubers are used, that means that Six Hate Club has the second in their control right now. Some sort of salvage looking out. Windows might be caught, and he is caught from the side of Johnny and from the nice explosive as well. I'm not sure if that was a pipe or a rocket, but catching him out as well means that rest of Six Hate Club 1 0 in this map. They have all the opportunity in the world to look into last with this Uber advantage. Yeah, it's going to be uh, about a 50% uber advantage, but because they still need to build up 50%, that's going to be a full 20 seconds for Plastic Mix-Up to figure out how they want to hold. They've got uh, Jebediah on the center gun. It looks like they've got TLM. He's going to hide behind this little barrel here on the right on Heavy, which is definitely going to help. That's two very annoying classes to deal with. Mm. You have to basically just break through them. Uh, classic, or Six Hate Club has gotten their way into Lobby. Their health is pretty decent, although one of their soldiers is kind of low, but it looks like they're just going through that top left area again. They use directly in a, a, a humongous amount of damage. Jebediah gets caught on NG, which is really bad for Classic Mix-Up here. Aiden and TLM goes down to the double Heavy bomb dead. from Classic Mix-Up. That's three down, and they just stuff him in spawn, and that's a 2-0 on the side of Six Hate Club in this first map. Classic Mix-Up really has to change things uh, up if they want to win. Yeah, that last push overall, I mean, super, super nuclear, obviously from Jello Jiggler, just bombing in, getting that huge amount of damage, getting the NG dead, but the ability to cross across the point as well and just immediately focus on that heavy, heavy before he can challenge the point just means that Rest of Six Hate Club has all the world in their uh, court to work with, but. Going into this mid right now, it's going to be sort of a reset now. Number one taking down to extremely low HP. Going to be backing up for that pack and toxic. Step looking for that deep, deep bomb on the medic, but it's not going to find anything other than the face of Jello Jiggler. Still going for it as well. On the pickaxe, running away, still alive. And Windows dead as well. I I didn't see exactly how that happened, but he dies as well. Even though the rest of uh, Classic Mixup, they're able to get this mid. They are down a medic. And number one Rocker living with his one player as well, being Jello Jiggler, means that they have this full Uber to work with if they want to choose to push out in the second. Yeah, it looks like they will be, I believe, as soon as they get all their players ready. Steb is trying to go for a little sneaky, uh, excuse me, a sneaky uh, wall book here. He is above Shutter, and they have no idea. We'll see if this pans out. He is only 160. He is going to drop in behind. He actually just decides to go into Shutter, and he's not going to get much out of it. He's trying to go for the back cap, actually. Here comes the stop attempt from Classic Mixup. They're able to stop it so much, and even though, oh my goodness, even though 6 Hit Club used just that Whoa. constant pressure on the point with Steb going for the back end, is actually going to give Classic Mix up their first round with a well-coordinated back cap attempt. That was very well executed, though. I'm, I'm very surprised about that. Yeah, they needed that as well. I mean, even though it was a little bit goofy and um, not the sort of uh, textbook playbook sort of uh, last push that you were hoping for, that is still a round for Classic Mix up to work off of, and they lost Windows on almost like i believe two out of three of these mids as well so hoping to rein this in as well hoping to have some sort of a better mid no pauses coming in early it's going to be a high bomb in from chocolate looking for anything but he does not find anything in return it's going to be number one rocker taking up 30 hp just from the spam alone the rest of ck club is so low they're all on red hp and they're getting taken out slowly number one rocker taken out chocolate taken out of the back end they get these trade kills onto steb and tlm but not fighting anything else, only with Johnny on only 30 HP battling on the bottom of the point. He wants anything else that he can get, but I don't know if he's going to get it. It's going to be Jebediah taking him out, and this is complete inverse. Like I said, they've cleaned up their mid. Classic mix-up. They have this mid when they have their mid alive. And they've gotten this one now, one round now, even though it was sort of a goofy round. They, they, they made this happen. They, they were able to get this mid in the control, and now it's completely inverse of the situations. Classic uh, Mixup lost their first round to this sort of ad push, so now it's really on Classic Mixup to figure out what they want to do.
Yeah, that was a really clean one from Classic Mixup, and they just put, um, after the early damage on Sunshine, they just put uh, Six Hey up into a really bad position. They're gonna Uber in through left, although they didn't really spot, and the gun is on right. Although, as I say that, Jebediah gets a ton of cap time. That's already gonna force Chocolate down to Stab Bombing, and just the overall sheer amount of cap time from the scouts of uh, Classic Mixup is just gonna get another cap. They've sort of cleaned up their act here, and it's now two to two. There's only one minute left, so I extreme. I can almost say for certain that there's not going to be any more rounds, and the winner of this, uh, the first team to get to their third round, will win this first map. And uh, my prediction is coming true. But anyways, um, we'll see what happens on this next mid. You know, they've uh, classic mix up has really cleaned up their mids. Yeah, hundred percent. That mid was super dominant for them as well. I mean, just bringing down so many people to such low HP and able to just clean those picks in the backside. Let's we'll see if they can repeat that now. Sort of early bomb again, going in from the soldier from the blue team. It's going to be 2 by 4 bombing extremely early as well as Chocolate. Both of run sub 10 HP and both are going to clean up as well, as well as Jello Jiggler. But they do get the pick onto Windows XP. It's going to be number one rocker up almost on 85%. Holding down, taking his scouts. He saw us, uh, Johnny and Sunshine to work with on this mid as well and they're going to be able to complete it completely we're going into banning time now so 2-2 two, two right now whatever round wins this is going to win this map and this was classic mix-ups pick on this uh reckoner as well so gotta be a little bit scary for them being down this uber ad trying to get the gun up on last right now they're actually slapping off of the gun right now tlm de deciding against it putting the gun up again but they're almost conceding the second they actually get the force out, and it's an awful Uber Jello game. The killer gets juggled straight up in the air, and there's a big collapse here in on Lobby. Classic Mixup already gets an early pick. The picks go in the favor of Classic Mixup. That's two down, and it looks like there's more fighting here. Chocolate's going to get picked. Actually, Aiden is really low. Windows saves him with the bow, Ooh. and Chocolate and, um, excuse me, Johnny were very low, but did get healed up, and they're actually going to hold off that push from Classic Mixup. But yeah, that mid was a lot better from uh, Six Hate Club, they were able to, uh, they noticed that Emmy goes behind uh, in their low, in the their own lower early, and they just decided to just go in very aggressively while Amity was unable to do anything to help the team. 2x4 is hiding on the left, Seb has no idea, does actually <laughs> spot 2x4 by, by accident, and that's gonna so give up low. his hiding spot. Yeah, no pick's gonna happen, but I think Classic Mixup, yeah, they've decided they don't want to risk it, they don't want to lose this first map, they don't want to go down one map, and so they're just going to stalemate it out on last, hoping for that round reset to get another shot at mid, and 6 Eight Club is going to get their 3 minutes and 15 seconds to try to go for some sort of uh, play to get this uh, round during the first map for them. Yeah, it's really going to show for the rest of uh, 6 Eight Club of how they are going to actually break this last. I mean, wrecking her last generally is such a hard last to break just in terms of uh, you gain the gun down, gain these off losses down if the team of the other team has the time to set up as well, but um, focusing back on that mid as well, it was so big for them, but two sat one sack going in early is going to be two by four. Cleaned up extremely early for the gun as well. He was looking for the mag and looking for that force as well, which would have meant almost the map as well, but some sort of counter aggression coming out from classic mix-up but like i was saying before i wanted to focus back on the mid classic mix-up was sort of playing this sort of behind style as well sending emity towards the lower side like you said but they also have been going for these extremely early bombs and then it's finally paid off for them as well they were able to get windows on that mid which allowed them to make this a scenario what it is right i mean they're looking into the enemy team's last Two to two right now, just on map score. So I don't imagine Classic Mixup really looking for anything other than just sort of counter sacks and trying to push out a last. Right? I mean, Reckoner is such a weird map in terms of flanks, in terms of people standing in doorways looking for forces. So only aggression I'm really seeing coming from them is going to be Stab looking for the spam early in lobby. He was looking for that about a minute ago as well, but. You know, really relying on their off classes is going to be classic mix-up. Yeah, no team is really going too crazy. There's been a couple of uh, long-range pipes that have happened from both teams, and those have kind of uh, been a little scary. Windows got dropped down to 50 pretty quickly, but nothing came of it. 2x4 gets chugged around by the gun. Is not going to get the force. Windows safely tucked away in spawn. They're actually going to decide to do a three-person sack, and they get no kills, and they even get forced by the long-range pipes, I believe, of Aiden. That is an awful situation for a 6A club. They are going to have to back up. 
Classic Mixup is gonna take over second, and I'm sure they're probably gonna decide to take mid here with their Uber ad, especially with those two players down, although those two players quickly respawn, so it's going to be a six on six push if they decide to go. But they still have like at least 20 seconds to figure out how they wanna push this, and they might even decide to wait for the spawner, although as I say that, they're actually just barreling right through lower. They're able to drive at the start, and then Aiden gets used on, but Aiden does get juggled, and no kill is gonna come through. Jello Jiggler is out pretty safely, but two by four is gonna get picked from by, uh, Amity and um, TLM on the back lines. Uh, Chocolate does get a kill into step, and Six Hate Club is going right back in. Amity gets a kill into They Chocolate. want it! Jello Jiggler gets a kill onto Aiden. It's a four on four, but no demo on the side of Class of Mixup means they just back out. Six Hate Club just bullied their way right back in and won, and they have a full 60% uh, Uber ad. It looks like Johnny already is calling to take it. Uh, um, excuse me, Toxic, and they have both, they finally have Jello Jello there with them, and here comes the push, and Classic Mixup is just very passive, so they're just gonna build their Uber and try to get it on last, and Six Height Club is actually maybe already getting in lobby, they might try to go they on this Uber ad, but yeah, it's very small. It's used out immediately as well, the rest of Six Height Club is gonna use their Uber extremely early, I don't know if Windows is really gonna get this, he might actually in this right side uh, spawn right now, just from the side of Classic uh, Mixup, they have to keep the plays alive right now. They have the heavy on point. I'm looking for anything else. They get Jello, Jiggler, and Johnny. No number one rocker kill, but they do get two boy four in the uh, end of that as well. Looking for some sort of salvage in this post of scenario. So now rest of six hand club just on mid. Willing to fully concede their second. They lost all of their soldiers. They lost their demo man. They know that this is no longer their point to have. And it gives a little bit of br uh, breath of fresh air for the rest of Classic Mixup, right? I mean, it's so scary being on this 2-2 two -two ma map score right now, trying to make sure that you are playing properly. It really is, but one thing to note is that Classic Mixup does not has about a 30% Uber because Windows used uh, later and he wasn't building very well. But Six Hake was been very slow. It looks like they just want to milk through without even taking a second. Here comes a sync or a, excuse me, a speed shot in from 2x4. Steb gets juggled, but somehow gets the kill onto 2x4, even with the health of chocolate. Does get traded out, but that's a 5 1 5. Six Click Hub does use that distraction to bully their wing and grab second, but it's going to be an even Uber situation here on last deal i'm just setting up the gun now might not have enough time if six hate club is fast enough if they get a sack off now they will probably be able to have a much better sack. Well, as i see that windows has been tucking himself away into spawn very safely so you may even want to consider going for other things i know aiden has been caught a couple of times and that's something they might want to do if they really want to uh win the like uh get a good sack off and then be able to pressure a lot harder with Jiggle Jell jiggler is already pressuring from the main door we have a bomb from both soldiers on six k club two by four did get through on the left side a lot of damage oh. taken on both uh, on both soldiers on the side of a uh, classic mix up here aiden is very aggressive does catch jell jiggler and doesn't even get caught himself and with that it looks like six k club just backs up yeah they don't want to have any sort of last pressure going in, especially with the demo dead as, as well, right? I mean, that's the main person that you want to use in on other than your scout. It's just super scary right now, so maybe a little bit of breath of uh, fresh air for classic mix up to actually work their way into this lobby area. Maybe look for some sort of a counter attack. They're not looking for it really early, so, um, you know, rest of. Uh, you know, six eight club. They're choosing to get actually the sniper up in spawn. Jello juggler waiting in spawn to open the spawn shutter for sunshine. He is on the sniper now, so a little bit of a different approach than what we've seen prior. Normally, it's just been uh, these sort of sacks into last, looking for the force under windows. But now they have the sniper to work with, and he is working his way into lobby, looking for any shot that he can get. Yeah, it looks like he's just trying to peek off of this uh, top left doorway here. He's got the traps up from Jello Jiggler to protect in case a crazy aggressive demo bomb comes in. Sunshine is fully scoped up. Oh. He does get the nice headshot onto Jebediah. Uh, Steb goes in with an instant bomb. Does catch a play from Jello Jiggler. So that's going to allow Sunshine to peek aggressively again. Chocolate did get through a little bit on this left side and is really pressuring Amity out. There's four people in on left side, although he gets a trap kill onto Jello Jiggler. That's huge. And that's probably going to call the retreat of Six Hate Club, although they did get the gun, so they might even try to go with the sack, although Amity and CLM just absolutely destroyed 2x4. Amity is going oh, to my God. The sniper, but Sunshine caught a nice headshot onto Jebediah again. Jebediah being uh, put back into the respawn queue.
it is still a 5 and 5 with the spawners, and I think Classic Mixup is still just, uh, even with all those nice picks because they lost Jedediah, I don't think they want to go for anything crazy. And TLM is going right back up on the sentry here, and we actually have a pause. A little bit of a pause right now. I don't know if this pause is, uh, you know, off the back of a, you know, some sort of a mid reset. Obviously, this match is so close, so both these teams are going to be wanting to, you know, really just went out this first map it is such a gigantic advantage for them and they really need to rein in what even what they're doing into these last pushes right for 6 hate club all of these last pushes these last two at least they've been losing jello jiggler their demo extremely early and you can't have that if you're looking for some sort of an, uh you know a, an aggressive uber situation yeah, you really can't. There's just a lot of crazy things that, like, it looks like Aiden is so caught every single time at least, but then somehow he just keeps getting Jello Jiggler with kills, with sticky kills. Like, some of them are trout sprinted, but it's it's so crucial for them, and it's really hurting Six Hate Club. I don't know how it keeps happening, but the other thing to note is that um, there's a lot of good pressure coming in from the soldiers on the side of Six Hate Club, which is really opening up some different opportunities for them, especially on these sacks. But it's just not enough. And even with this sniper, which they are still on, um, we'll see if they decide to. Uh, I'm assuming they're gonna just peak sunshine in again. They still had. I don't remember how long they had, but I think they had maybe like a minute and a half or so left on the clock. So they definitely still have enough opportunity to go for one more. Uh, big sack play and they could even have sunshine try to go for a potential hero shot here because sunshine did just swap or respawn onto sniper and is out of the spawn door so we know that Ch uh, sunshine will be playing sniper still does have to roll out but you know it's going to be a sniper versus a sentry gun situation again and that's something you kind of expect on last but reckoner only doesn't have like insanely great angles for sniping onto last so which is good but you know, it does make it a little bit harder to work with the sniper, but Sunshine has made it work. So we'll see if he's able to get any more, more, any more influential kills. Well, any influential kills. Yeah, I mean, he was able to get a lot of the kills onto specifically a scout. I think it was onto Jebediah. Um, you know, he he was actually able to find one of those scout kills. Like you said before, these sight lines just overall on Reckoner are way less beneficial for sniper to find anything onto these major classes be it the ng the demo or the medic as well um you know you have way more solid walls to protect yourself against so uh even if he is able to come up on the sniper and look for anything else i really don't think that he's going to be finding anything like a medic pick really um so i i don't know my prediction at least going into this last is that this pause really did come out from, you know, some sort of a class reset. Uh, but yeah, we'll have to see. Definitely, uh, this has looked very volatile on either side of um, this match as well. So I, I'm very interested to see what the winning play is going to be for either of these teams. Yeah, based on the timing of this, we, I, I am kind of expecting that there's not going to be any successful sack attempts and it's going to go into mid again. And, you know, one of the teams paused to be like, okay, why are we struggling with these? La like, it's either 6-8 club, like, trying to figure out, okay, why are we struggling with these last sack attempts? Or it's classic mix-up trying to figure out how they can work on places other than last. Because, like, besides those uh, quick two rounds in succession, they've been kind of on the back foot for most of this game, and they've spent a decent amount of time on their laps. Now, they have been holding it, but in the other times, they're kind of getting pressured out through doors really well from the side of Six Hate Club. And I think that just comes down to the overall more experience on the side of Six Hate Club. But it's definitely not over for Classic Mixup, and they can definitely work something to, uh, together. Um, I... I don't think we'll see anything like super different on either team. I I mean, Sunshine being on Sniper, I'm, there's not much to say. It's just sort of Sniper going for kills. And you have your demo trap off the door to prevent any soldier bombs. And you hope that, you know, your Sniper gets a pick. But it's never guaranteed. And you really do have to keep, you know, using pressure from your soldiers to be able to try to get something. But it's never guaranteed. Yeah, 100%. It's not guaranteed at all. Um you know, off of the soldiers as well, there's only so many sack plays that you can really do into uh, Reckoner last. Uh, 
that is actually going to be beneficial as we are going back live here. Unpause coming out, so we'll have to see where this comes from. I believe this was a minute and 20 seconds in the round timer alone to, you know, some see, see some sort of a, a last push. But now, rest of six take up. They really need to figure out something. They have the sniper up. They have sun, sunshine on it. Looking for this top left. Looking for anything. Chocolate finds the gun extremely early, so that's a huge kill for him, or huge strike for him. But two by four. Gonna be going down as well as Jello, Jello Jiggler going down. Sunshine does find TLM, so a NG kill, I believe, on the back end as well. I think actually, no, wait, swapped his sniper. So he finds the sniper versus sniper and wins against TLM, but so many picks going out is gonna mean that Classic Mixup has their way into lobby. They can look for possibly a counter sack, but anything else. Yeah, Jello Jiggler got picked again on this last uh, pressure for a sack, which is very huge for them. This time, Sunshine actually swapped on Sniper again, even though there's only 30 seconds left. That is a very, very bossy play. It looks like um, TLM is currently in spawn on Spy. It looks like he's Spy checking, and he is going to swap onto Pyro. Here comes the aggressive Uber from Six Hit Club, just trying to get anything. Johnny gets picked early by Amity there. A slightly later Uber from the side of Classic Mixup, not a huge bit later. Jello Dribbler is very aggressive again. Aiden gets a kill in the 2x4. A lot of damage going through uh, from both teams, but it's definitely favoring Classic Mixup, but they don't really have any time on second, so it's just going to stalemate out again. And that was the pause, and that was actually a pause, I believe. Let me check, but yes, it was a pause from Classic Mixup, not Six Hate Club. So we will see how they decide to change on this next mid and uh, hopefully for them at least um, layer points and not losing anything crazy. Yeah, I mean, classic mix up previously in their last match that we casted, they were the ones who were more willing to pause on these scenarios, really try to talk stuff over. Um, you know, they wanted to figure out exactly what was going wrong on these last pushes or these mids and just really try to figure it out. But early bomb coming in from Stab is going to mean that he is cleaned up. Chocolate going down, and it's going to be 2x4 uh, going down as well. So even kills out. A little bit of a scrappy fight. It's going to be Windows, Jebediah, and TLM fighting in the enemy team's barrels, looking for anything else that they can get. They have the pick on number one rocker, and it's just going to be Jello last, last one alive in this crates area. He's going to get taken down himself. So now, full Uber advantage for Classic Mixup. up They have their full ability to work their way into the enemy team's last. They were stuck on their last for so long, and maybe this pause was just what they needed. It definitely might have been. They went for a bit earlier bombs, and they got windows into the enemy team's carbo cargo, but the big thing there was Steb able to do a high bomb, and he was just able to get three rockets onto number one rocker, who I think missed him, and so number one rocker didn't really hit a good surf on the second, on the first rocket that hit him, and that really hurt his chances of living here. We do have uh, a bit of pressure. There's still only 25% Uber out here. Jebediah wants to go in top left, but I think Windows got juggled by a bit of spam, and that's probably going to lead to a really bad Uber here. There's an aggressive use in. Aiden gets a kill into Sunshine. Does get the gun, but... Um, excuse me, number one rocker does have Uber. Aiden got a kill into Chocolate. Jell Dribbler does get a kill back onto TLM. And even though it's a 4v5, uh, there's another kill from Jell Dribbler onto Jebediah, and the Uber is used on the side of 6 Hate Club. But that will most likely give about a 25% Uber add on the side of Classic Mixup. We'll see how they intend to use it. Yeah, it looks like it's about a 20% Uber add. They just back up onto second, and I think they're going to try to hard build. Although, as I say, that they really haven't been building that well. So it's maybe going to turn to Uber even more. Although, uh, Six Hate Club hasn't been building that well either. They're finally starting to build, but it has turned. It has just maintained a 20% Uber add, and there is a sniper and NG on the side of Six Hate Club. We'll see how this push works now. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they have Sunshine up in this right lobby. He isn't able to get the headshot off early. It's probably going to be cleaned up by Stab, but he does get cleaned up by Stab, so nice little counter aggression from the sniper being too far through the doorway. Johnny's going to stick him down early, and they don't even have to do too much with this Uber. They have half the cap time, and they have so many picks to work with. Aiden is not dead as well, and it's going to be the rest of the blue team trying to barrel the way into point. Jello Jello less alive, and that's going to be round one, or I mean map one, actually, taken for classic mix-up looking to last. Yeah, big push from them there. They just got so many early kills on that last push, and that was more like, I mean, the real big thing there was just getting those early kills. Amity and Step both got an early kill, and beat six on or already holding last uh, your own last on disad is hard enough, but doing it with down down two players when you're at disad is almost impossible to deal with, and that's just uh, how the cookie crumbles, unfortunately. Yeah, it um, really is.
yeah, getting a look at these logs here. Um, yeah, Aiden was absolutely farming. If we look at the damage, this the damage definitely went in the favor of Classic Mix-Up. The explosives on Classic Mix-Up were absolutely nuking the, the enemy team. And the explosives on 6 Hate Club definitely were setting the pace of the game, but they were not doing as well statistically. Um, you know, two of them, both Jello Juggler and 2x4 are going damage negative. But um, the scouts kind of evened it out a bit because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it looks pretty even. One drop on both teams. Nothing huge, I would say. Similar amount of med deaths. So nothing huge besides just the the overwhelming amount of damage, especially from Aiden and Amity. Um, just uh, going so I, positive. You know, I don't know how you would look at this M17, but... For me, this really does feel like how NA, especially at the lower level, interprets CP Reckoner. Um, it kind of looks like a map that you would see, uh, you know, similar to uh, what we consider a, uh, you know, a sort of an even or a very hold E, I guess is the term, map, where the big defining features are the forces that are coming out, the sacks that are coming out, and especially the off buses as well. Um, you know, logs themselves aren't going to have too many players with above 300 dpm but these are the big defining features of really what makes or breaks the map for the other team yeah no i mean this is definitely uh it's it's definitely it's definitely it's i was a map uh we'll say that much um, <laughs> yeah we'll say that much but going into the second map which is gully wash this one is known for explosive classes so um, if the, if, uh, Classic Mix-Up keeps it up, they could actually get a 2-0 win on this map. 6-8 Club really has to step it up if they want to, uh, win, uh, if they want to win. Although, as I said, uh, even though I said that, um, this was 6-8 Club's, uh, map pick, and Reckoner was Classic Mix-Up in this map pick, so I wouldn't be surprised if we still see a win on the side of 6-8 Club. Uh, definitely a bit more experience on the side of 6-8 Club, and, you know, Golly Watch is... Uh, is known for a lot of choky plays, a lot of uh, weird things you have to go for just to try to hopefully get some sort of advantage because there's uh, a lot of weird angles and distances um, and tight doorways as well that are very uh, different from pretty much all other uh, Sixes maps. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Gully Wash is a very old NA map. Uh... Generally, it's very defined from the soldiers on mid and to how either team can break into the last hold, be that either uh, water pressure or um, really solid ubers into last as well. Um, but I, I really do think that the defining features, at least for us to look at, are going to be uh, obviously the mids, right? Mids are TF2, right? Mids are going to be what's defining how your team is playing, but... I think there's going to be a lot of seconds holds, and I think there's going to be a lot of decisions made from both of these teams from how they want to uh, sack or break into the enemy team second. What do you, what do you think, though, going into this? Yeah, I, I'm just so unsure of what to see because, like, it's definitely looked a lot less like aggressive and like overconfident on the side of classic mixup, which is something that they had been using in their their season earlier. And I think that just comes from the different main color. Um, the other thing that, uh, well, the big other thing that I really want to point out is just, um, I mean, I don't know. I'm I'm just so unsure of what's going to happen. I mean, just how different the the game is being played, like from classic mixup, just that completely mm. different main color it's just they seem like a completely different team i'm going to be honest and even just watching uh the teams throughout the season they were the most dominant team through the season but you know they still did lose to the team that eventually i believe got sixth place in the season in uh on metalworks we're not going to be playing uh metalworks tonight but it's not like classic myself hasn't lost obviously they lost in the uh upper bracket finals to zug jug even with all their main rostered players so you know, it's not like they're an unbeatable team, especially Six Hate Club got two rounds on them. Uh, you know, and they look they look so unbeatable for a hot minute though, right? I mean they, that's classic, what I was saying. Yeah, Classic Mix Up only dropped one map or uh in the regular season. And now in this playoffs it sort of almost looks like they're floundering. We'll have to see, obviously, if they're able to clean it up. These ringers have not looked too I wouldn't say bad, but too abnormal from their regular play style, right? It seems like they're still going for the plays that they want to. They're still going for the mids that they want to. Uh, maybe a little bit fragmented just in terms of timing and stuff like that, but 
you can tell that the core of the team is definitely still there. Yeah, I think even with the new main color, the core of the team is still there. They still have everybody else besides Cyrus uh, in their main combo is still, or excuse me, not everybody else. Well, yeah, besides Cyrus, excuse me, they still have uh, Steb, uh, Windows, and Aiden. Their main, there are other three combo players besides their combo scout. They're all yeah. the same, and so they're definitely still going to have that chemistry going for them. And it's definitely easier to have uh, subbing slash ringing flank players than it is to have combo players a lot of the time, just because, you know, changing how your combo plays and what you can expect from them is very difficult. Although, just overall, the more players you change, the difference, you know, the different way this team is going to form. But it's not like these players are bad. Like, Amity definitely has a solid amount of experience. So it's not like, and I mean, none of the ringers or subs have really been playing poorly, I, I wouldn't say. So I don't think it's like, it's not like a necessarily a downgrade, but the only thing that they really had is not just less practice time. And especially with their their match where they lost to Zugjug on Thursday, and they only probably only had a few like like maybe one or two, maybe three at the most days of practicing with this uh, roster, knowing that they were going to lose players because I believe a couple of players are out of town. But yeah, know, it's just it's just something that I I honestly. I was I was thinking we're gonna have like a, a close game, and I still think we will based on that first game. But you know, it could be either one. It could be six. Like I wouldn't be surprised to see Classic Mix Up start rolling on map two or Six Hit Club roll the next two maps. I wouldn't I wouldn't be so surprised to see anything. You know, it's really up in the air as to what we'll see here in these next two maps. Yeah, I mean, obviously the map pick was a uh, Classic Mix that they chose Reckoner. Obviously, trying to just like uh, you know. I, I, I hate to say it, but mix things up, right? But uh, you're going for that map pick and going for something that's a little bit abnormal, a little bit less studied just in terms of a lot of these players, uh, you know, what they're used to playing in terms of scrims or pugs or anything like that. But it's I feel like this is going to be more of a defining match in terms of, you know, what the teams feel comfortable on, what their play styles are. Even if you have ringers on the side of you know, excuse me, it's classy mix-up, you have the ball in your court to figure stuff out, right? You have these mids that you understand to a high degree, and you can send your soldiers at a double sack, you can play it, someone go for a, a drop-down play. It's all sort of figured out to some degree for these players. No, I mean, yeah, and this is one of the maps where you definitely need a ton of coordination because mm. of how close... At close by everything is and how many like weird doorways and flank plays there are especially like there's there's plenty of like there's common flank plays like you said drop down but also flanking through the uh baby door and shutter to get into a uh, river earlier and get into last early that can be it that's a very common flank play that you'll see especially at um that's something that higher levels just know all too well so i you know there's going to be a lot of necessary coordination um but i have heard that the the calls from the um filling in players has been good or yeah the comms from the uh players filling in has been good on the side of classic mix up so i don't think it's going to be too big of a deal for them but we'll see what happens here as we go into the first mid on this second map of gully wash yeah i mean gully wash right i mean obviously looking towards the early damage coming out from the demo the bombs and the soldiers and what these soldiers are choosing to do we're going to have to see as the early bomb going up from chocolate sword and choosing to fade Step as well, choosing to fade, going for a little bit of this early pressure, and 2x4 bombing up extremely early onto the low HP windows. It's not going to find that damage, barely cleaned up from the scouts. It's going to be windows cowering in his own elbow on only 40, 30 HP, and the rest of his scouts, TLM, able to find sunshine and chocolate for him. Huge pickups for them, and finding number one rocker as well, just in the spam overall. I mean, it's goalie wash, man. It can really be defined off of the spam that you find early on and the follow up from that. And it looked like. From 6 k Club, they had the spam early. They were able to get the med down super, super low to only 30 HP before he was able to walk up in his own el elbow. But Windows doing an amazing job just banging that damage extremely hard and staying alive now. So now the uh, rest of Classic Mix Up, they have this Uber to work with, looking into second and possibly last. But a nice shot ring out from Sunshine all the way up into River. He might be cleaned up himself, and he is from the side of Amity, just choosing to bomb up for him. But Oh, still a nice, very uh, good pick to find if you're trying to break the sort of last push that Classic Mixup has, and they're choosing to stack onto second right now. 
Yeah, Amity with a very nice speed shot to catch off Sunshine. That was very well executed. One thing that was really important to note on that mid, though, is as much damage as Windows took, number one Rocker somehow took more damage. Number one Rocker was like 15 HP on the walk-up, and Amity with just a bomb right before I think number one Rocker, like, was barely unable to get the pack. It, like, just spawned right as he got there, and Amity was right there on him, and just one rocket, and it's number one rocket with a 30 damage class was just enough to clean him up instantly, and Amity did a ton of pressure just going from the ground and getting uh, some stuff behind. Uh, it's just going to be an even uber situation here, I think, because of that pick. Classic mix-up didn't feel too comfortable. Thielen has worked his way into water. Just six hit club. No, it looks like they know. They have two by four uh, not on the rim. They have chocolate now on the rim. No, it looks like two by four is going to be the one watching Thielen. Thielen does go in, is not going to be able to get any pick. Steb wants to go for a kill, does get the gun down but is gonna get picked off by sunshine and sniper and that's two down but on on gully watch it can be very hard to push out even when the enemy team is down to on even doers yeah definitely chocolate and jello jiggler looking for this sort of pressure early into the lobby area trying to find anything they can but with the height advantage of what river provides it's getting the Gemini townhouse gets a pick on the chocolate windows does force the uber out though from the soldiers that's going to be two by four getting that force up from him going down himself but having that force out is so massive if you're on the side of six hay club now they have this full uber even if they're holding the last with this you know these players down it feels way more secure for them yeah that's a big uh that's a big play for them and they're going to be able to push out here eventually i think i think they're finally getting all their players up they're finally clearing everything out Steb doing a decent job of actually just delaying really hard and he still hasn't gotten picked teal actually four. went in yeah hidden water and T uh two by four did clean it up but that's going to delay a lot but classic reason is just very far out. they've actually just gotten all five of their players out to choke and that's like pretty much no pressure they only have the traps on the doorway here uh high bomb from the chocolate is going to clear out the space but Classic mix was so far away that that's just gonna let um, Six Hay Club completely retake it. And uh, uh, TLM has spawned on Sniper. And I'm assuming TLM is gonna start peeking eventually through Big Door. It looks like that's where he's working towards. And we'll see if he's able to get anything. Sunshine takes a bit of damage early. TLM is going for that aggressive pick. They don't know yet, and they do know about the Sniper. Jellogic goes down to 24 oh. HP. He does get a trap kill onto Amity. Very nice. Uh, just catching the Amity uh, off guard, trying to go behind, and that's going to cause Classic Mix up to back up, and we'll see. Here comes the counter stack in from 2x4. Is almost going to get Aiden. How did Aiden survive yeah. that? That was insane. Yeah, I, I don't know if I love that exactly, exactly, right, but going for the immediate aggression off the pick being gone, right? I mean, you have to try something if you're on Golden Watch second or even Golden Watch last, right? It's so hard to get these stacks through. But the rest of class and mix up, they're already pushing their way through this big door. They have the sniper peeking, but no other players really getting through early is going to mean that they're going to be sort of spammed out. It's such a hard doorway to get through if you are not getting through it immediately. And the rest of. Six Hay Club, they're going to be used, choosing to use this about immediately early on Sunshine. Counter Uber coming out from Jebediah, looking for anything he can get. Noble and Rocker is going to be sheltering himself in the enemy team's lobby, and I don't know if they're going to get anything off of this. It's going to be sort of a flat Uber. Maybe they're working their way in the second, but it's so hard now. John to game the pick onto Jebediah, and 2x4 getting the pick onto Amity. Stab looking for anything he can. He does get chocolate in the end side of it, getting bowed up from Windows now, but. They're three dead, including their demo on the side of Plastic Mix-Up, so, you know, you go for this extremely early Uber exchange, trying to find some sort of advantage, but it's so hard now, and now you're probably just going to be losing mid, if not another player. The rest of Plastic Mix-Up, they're able to get out now. Nobody getting really extremely caught on the second. They get a forward spawn or two, it's going to be Aiden coming up, able to hold on this big door for his team, but... It's still a very tragic sort of Uber if you're on the side of Plastic, plastic Mix-Up, right? You were hoping for so much more on that. Yeah, that was just, that was so uncoordinated. It wasn't like a great counter collapse from Jebediah because nobody was there on the counter Uber besides Jebediah. It was about a 25% Uber out here for Six Hate Club, but they didn't work off of it. Sunshine tried to go in behind, didn't get any kills. So much pressure back in meeting uh, Six Hate Club's uh, pressure with the heals. And they're not going to get any push here, although Six Click Club uh, are clearing traps, and they're going to go right back into pressure in Big Door here. They're trying to figure out all these traps. They have five people here in Big Door, just chocolate alone that choke. 
could be pushable, but I don't think uh, Plasma Mix have planned on pushing. I think they're just planning on stacking so many people here. They did finally get two soldiers over here, and they actually rotated their heels really quickly over to Choke. Um, Plasma Mix up did eventually rotate through Choke, but they didn't hold this doorway well, and they got two players through Sunshine and Chocolate are through. Amity gets the kill onto Chocolate, and Stev helps Amity gets that kill into Sunshine. That's two down. Big Door might be kind of free, although 2x4 is there, and there's not enough health on the side of Plasma Mix. So Jello Jiggler is the only one to choke, and Amity has, I believe that's Amity, yep, Amity has worked the way through drop down. Gonna go right back in, in on number one, Rocker gets Johnny and gets the force. Oh, Huge play from Amity, and he's still is alive! Amity's, they're alive, and... He lives too! Oh my, too. Goodness, oh my god! Oh, oh my goodness. And he gets to the pack as well in his own river, but that's such a massive play. And now with Plastic Mixup getting their spawner, they're able to make their way through this choke and choose how they want to do this, uh, do it, obviously. Step making his way through the uh, drop down side, looking for anything they can catch out, trying try to clear out the traps on his own side so the Plastic Mixup doesn't die. 2x4, looking for some sort of salvage, gets two rockets on the windows, but they're not close enough to where he gets a force or anything like that, so. That is just now a complete flip flop, and now Plastic Mix Up, they have this Uber ad, they have mid. Are they going to make their way into lobby and their way into second right now? Plastic Mix Up with Jebediah looking for anything they can. Only 75% Uber from uh, number one rocker, and they are choosing to use it. They're trying to catch out every single person they can up in this river area, and Chocolate is actually going to find Aiden in the back end of it. Maybe not Flash, but maybe just too low. Aiden dropping the LOL OMFG and Chocolate dropping the LOL as well. Just sort of realizing that it's sort of a goofy kill, sort of an off kind of kill that you're not really expecting to get. But Step looking for anything. He does get the force out from number one, trying to save his players. It's only giving you Step going down, so going to be slight Uber advantage for the rest of Classic Mix Up now. They only lost Step getting that Uber, uh, you know, that Uber as well. So now yeah. Classic Mix Up, they're looking for anything they can get. They're getting the NG up, but. It's, it's really tough for them. Yeah, that was a big misplay on the side of Six Hate Club. They just, they, it's like they didn't get the comms out in time. That Classic Mixup was uh, flanking through Baby Door. That's a common play you definitely need to know about. Classic Mixup just, they did end up getting forced, but they were managed, they managed to catch up three people and were able to then use that two extra player ad. Even though they lost Aiden, they were able to get the early force off. Here comes the early aggressive Uber from Aiden. It is already 85% on the side of Six Hate Club, already 90. Steb did get a kill on the oh! Humongous damage from Steb and uh, Amity. They do eventually get the force, but it's six on. To. This is going to be almost impossible for six hate club. Sunshine gets one kill, but as soon as this Uber ends, there's going to be a massive collapse, and that is the first round in favor of Classic Mixup. That was a very well executed push on their side, and it looks like they just six hate club just didn't have enough stuff set up, and they really got caught off guard. They lost too many people early, and that was very well played from Classic Mixup. We'll see what happens on this mid two. Uh, so yeah. Mid I'm really, really happy that they were able to convert that sort of even small ad, if not the player ad, into that last push as well. Just a huge volatile way of them being recognizing, or of them recognizing that they could push their way into the enemy team's second to gain that force out, and those kills out extremely early. It's gonna be Amity, forced off of the ground extremely early, backing up into his own team's big door. The rest of the classic mix-up does not have too much position, too much board, except for Aiden. And TLM able to boss off the soldier that was bombing forwards, as I said that. They were able to make their way onto point and finding more, if not even as much as they could ever want in terms of two soldiers and Sunshine going down extremely late. And they're already making their way through second. Give me a nice air shot attempt onto Jello Jiggler. Not connecting exactly, but still that looks like the demo caught right now and Jello Jiggler is going to be an extremely delayed death. So even Uber scenario on this last point, but now it's on six hate club to figure out something now. They're able to send you up before, but they died so, so, so early compared to that. Sentry going down from Amity, so now it's the last push in from Plastic Mixup. They get the force out. They are not using their Uber and immediately Windows cowering on the enemy, not cowering exactly, but on the enemy team second, just holding this Uber with the rest of his players. It's gonna be everybody else alive except Stab right now. That is that happened again. Steb just goes in for the bomb. He is able to get the first rocket and then jump out, but somehow stay alive. And then everybody wow. on six hate club just over chases. Amity gets in, always gets the force, and then gets out alive. And Steb just accepts the death for that. That is, that's just such a misplay on the side of six hate club. And good uh, recognition. They do it again on the side of classic mix up. Here comes the Uber. Sunshine is trying to delay it a bit. Sunshine does actually get out to spawn, and Steb gets killed. 
2 by 4 gets a kill onto Teelon. This is not going in the favor of 6 Hate Club. Although, as I see that, 2 picks on the favor of 6 Hate Club. Sunshine's extremely low. Amity's gonna die here. Kills now going in the favor of Classic Mixed Up. It's now up to Jebediah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's Jebediah and Jello Jiggler. Jello Jiggler with this man on the back of point, and now it's going to be the Red Scout running on the point. He does get the cleanup from the six of Jello Jiggler. Now it's just on Windows XP to run away, but I don't think he's going to get out safely. He gets the pack, but he's being chased so, so aggressively right now. They, are, they want this medic right now. Jello Jiggler gets a nice little spam pipe onto him, but Windows actually able to hold this his life, which is crazy. So now the rest of Class and Mixup, they have this ad, they have this second point. Do they want to take this into mid immediately? Um, I believe they're going to. It's about a 40% Uber ad. They're trying to go through Choke. They actually decide they're going to go through Drop Down. Chocolate and Sunshine at Choke, and it's just 2 by 4 big door. Johnny gets a kill into Stub. Aiden gets a trap kill into Sunshine. The use did come through on the side of 6 Hateful, but they're not getting much. And it's just a 5 on 5, and I think Class and Mixup is electing to go big door with their Uber. Amy is going to go, um... Excuse me, uh, choke here. But TLM is with them at. Uh, they want to use. Door. Here comes the aggressive Uber, but Aiden beefs the jump, and they're uh -oh. not going to get anything. Two by four is behind, caught, and I think Steb is. No, Steb is just the spawner. Two by four is actually able to sneak his way up into river. That's going to be brutal for uh, Classic Mixup to deal with. Um, There's a one on one going is, on the back yeah. end, so it's Steb and two by four. They're looking for this one on one play, and Steb gets a nice direct onto two by four. Not able to win is two by four on that mid, and Jello Jiggler actually going down as well. They still have this ad to work with on the side of Six Hate Club. They're almost getting here, almost at 95%. So, we'll have to say if they want to catch the meta up close and choke, but getting Steb as well might just be the uh, the key to success for them. So they're using the Super Out, flashing a million people. And Johnny looking for the pick on the Widows, he does get it. Chuckle looking in for the demo as well. It's going to be Aiden on only 18 HP, trying to cover as well. He actually gets out? That's crazy! So the demo lives there, and he's able to retreat on the west, get the reason they need, but now, 6 Hate Club, they used that ad in. They were able to get Windows, and now they have ad again. It's only going to be about 30-40% to ad for them, so... Still something actionable, like get the gun early, so it's going to be a lot of pace made for them. And there's the pause out for them. Uh, this pause, you know, it, it, it's not as ambiguous as the last pause that we saw. I mean, the last pause, pause that we saw was on Reckoner, where it was like a 2 2, expecting a reset. I really do think that Six Hate Club is able to convert this momentum that they have and this Uber advantage that they have onto the last point. And I, I think that this is now up to class and mix up to figure out what they need to do going into this next mid. Well, we will see TLM's gun did go down early. I expect Six Hate Club to continuously pressure that out. Um, there's still about like three minutes, 30 seconds left, and it's just a 40% Uber ad. But, you know, as we saw, a classic mix-up was able to use a 30% Uber ad to take the first round. So I wouldn't be surprised if Six Hate Club was able to do it again, especially with all of the pressure they have already on last. They could probably prevent TLM from even setting up a gun which is very huge because the sentry gun is essentially just the seventh player that you can set up that the enemy team just has to deal with on a disad hold. And as soon as the sentry goes down, your NG can just swap right off to heavy or scout and it can be very annoying. And that's just like a free body that you can use on defense, which is just always so, so impactful. NG is pretty much the most important off class on last because it's really important and not having that gun up is actually makes holding last a lot mm. harder, especially when the enemy team does have an uber ad and there's no point you can back up to you have to fight yeah and with the gun being done as well and you have this uber ad to work off of they're not going to be able to get this uber immediately pushing it last but still like you said so much momentum right i mean they have the uber they have the gun dead they have the people to actually push their way into last and with the gun dead it means that the scouts and the soldiers themselves can peek in without fear of just being immediately deleted uh, so, still, I, 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 I genuinely do believe that this is sort of a 2-0 pause right now, but or actually a 1-1 pause. Um, sorry, excuse me, class of mix-up, they're going to be bringing it still, even if they lose this round, to a 1-1 scenario, and over 15 minutes of time remaining on this map is going to mean that there's going to be a lot more deciding moments and deciding mids as well. Yeah, I, this map is definitely not over, and I still, like, so far, like, compared to Reckoner, I'm surprised that there hasn't been, like, an insane amount of, like, 
um, excuse me, stalemating, which is very interesting. Normally you see a decent amount of stalemating. I mean, there has been some, but like there has been like, uh, Reckoner was a lot of just holding on last, whereas there has not been that much holding on last here. I mean, it's only been a couple of minutes. It's mostly been like uber forcing in trades and stuff like that. So, you know, I, I don't think the pace of the game will change. I Even though there is a pause, I think it's just um, whoever paused is trying to just work out a couple of kinks to figure out how they can, you know, be more successful. I'm really curious as to who paused. I have no idea, but I can't wait to find out. Um... Both teams are, uh, you know, both teams could have paused, you know, even if you went around, you could potentially pause just to like, as a mind game, just to like try to, you know, get the enemy team to like think about that for a bit. Like they have to, you know, like really make them think about how they just lost that round. But yeah, it's more likely that, I don't know, like at this point, I, I feel like it might have been just like no team went around or maybe like a big structural mistake happened on the side of uh, classic mix-up and they paused to try to fix it because we still haven't you know the first pause the only pause on map one was uh classic mix-up pausing uh i believe at the end of uh six hate club failing to uh, push into last successfully so i wouldn't be surprised if we see another pause from classic mix-up i remember they did pause on um in their match in the upper bracket finals so I wouldn't be surprised if this is them pausing again. You know, remember you have two halves or two five minute pauses per map in every match. So they could definitely pause for five minutes here and then potentially even have another five minute pause later if they really yeah. need it. But you know. Yeah, and true from uh true from Pika as well. Will this uh will this pause happen before uh you know any of these players graduate from college and they have to stop playing TF two? We will see. Um you know, a lot of uh, pressure on both of these teams to have stuff figured out, regardless if this was a round conversion for the side of the Six Hay Club. They need to feel confident um, that, you know, they're able to convert what they need to. Uh, but uh, it's still, right? I mean, it's gully wash. Stuff is so volatile. It's just kind of how I look at this map in general. is a very volatile map, uh, either on these last or these mids. I think those are the big bullet points on this map, so... You know, if they, if they feel like they're not confident on this mid, it would make something make sense that Classic Mixup just wants to pause. They have these ringers; they want to get stuff, you know, just really set in stone and make sure that they are proper. Yeah, Gully Wash, like you said, Gully Wash is such a small mid, and so you, like one big change or even one like not even super impactful change can actually just completely uh, change like completely upset the favor of a mid fight right and i don't remember i think the mid fights have been was it one to one in favor of both teams if i remember correctly both teams won in mid and i know plasma mixer won the first one i do forget about the second one but um i wonder what is what what's going through both these teams right now like even when one team pauses the other one still gets some time to talk about stuff and even mm -hmm. if the other team is pausing you still get some time to work things out figure out where your issues are figure out how you can you know adapt things like that um we may be having some production issues we will see possibly um, oh oh my goodness it looks like it's Oh my goodness. Okay, it looks like there's going to be some technical issues. It looks like number one rocker actually timed out. Uh-oh. That's going to be interesting. So, you know, what do you think happens here? Uh, I mean, with number one rocker timing out, uh, it, that was kind of really hinging on the rest of 6K Club to actually get this round off of that. If he, if he timed out during this last push, or he timed out in some time uh, in between... I... I'm not sure, right? Because usually technical issues, especially your med timing out, just means that the sort of uh, the round is reset or the scenario is sort of reset, depending on how these players are choosing to uh, divide, uh, you know, divide the advantage. But one thing I did want to bring up and just sort of flashing back to somewhat of higher level TF2, um, right, is like looking at the pauses. Lots to say for for land, right? We saw a lot of pauses coming out for Froyo Tech, and I know it feels weird to bring up Froyo Tech. We're talking about I am right now, but the way that Froyo Tech was pausing in between every single round, uh, I feel like it really decided their pace for that mid, or not for that mid, but just for their rounds in general, right? They were very, very willing to pause. They were one of the more pause-heavy teams in those playoffs as well. 
Uh, and you could tell that in just the mids that came after the pause, the uh, coordination and the game plans as well. Even if it didn't pan out for them, it, it sort of shows the different mindsets that these teams have between, uh, you know, what like their mindsets going into these pauses. Are you really looking to work off of the momentum that you have? Are you willing to catch the teams off guard? Or do you want to just take a second, take a beat, take a breath, and... You know, figure stuff out because I, I do think that's a big thing. I don't think enough teams do actually pause in RGL. No, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, that's something that's been slightly changing, I think, now that you have two five minute pauses and there's mm -hmm. no like um, halftime break or anything like that. But it doesn't mean that like pauses don't happen, but like they're definitely not as plentiful as you might see when like a pause can definitely completely upset. Uh, like how a game goes, um, it could just, could just, or not even upset, but like change the pace of how the game goes. So, I mean, they can be very important, even if you don't think you're like winning or anything like that. Um, you know, it can be, uh, it can be, you know, something that's, uh, that's very influential on in a game, even if, even if you don't say anything, changing the pace of the match and giving yourself a time to breathe and get some, you know, maybe get some food or get some water or something if you were missing that, you know, that can be very important. Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't know if you've experienced this as well, but uh, when I started playing RGL as well, my team was very willing to do a lot of pauses and pauses work out right to some degree, but there's also times where you do pauses and you must feel like the enemy team dissects you in like a more dramatic fashion, right? Like I've been in scenarios where I have paused personally during an official and uh, the enemy team was also willing to take that pause and they were able to convert it into, um, you know, different plans on the mids between rounds. Obviously my team pauses a lot during, uh, you know, rounds or a lot of close scenarios and stuff like that. But I think that there is a lot of a double-edged sword in terms of pauses and it also speaks to the resolve of the players in the matches as well like I, you have to be able to uh you know take a second to keep yourself in a good mental and not just play only off of you know these uh these volatile moments right this momentum that you do have so i i do think that pauses on one hand kind of lame right i mean you have to imagine it's a lot more interesting for these players that are in these pause scenarios regardless regardless of if it's attack pause or a uh you know a technical pause you have to have the resolve that is needed to keep your own gameplay up and keep the uh team mental up as well yeah i mean e even in situations like this you know you still have to keep yourself in level ahead um, I'm going to see if I can figure out what's going on, you know, I don't know what you're thinking about, like, in terms of predictions, if you, I don't know if you think, what's your prediction for the rest of this map and, you know, the following maps? Yeah, I mean, for the rest of this map, it's kind of a little bit difficult to predict. This is only a 1-0 map score. Uh, I just generally want to see whether this is a technical or this is a tactical pause. I think it is more of a technical just because of what you said about number one uh, rocker crashing out you are the admin after all so you'd be able to tell me but um i, I still think that goalie wash regardless of how the mids go it is more just who is able to reset and who is able to win out in the margins uh, i personally i think that class and mix-up does have the edge here with the ringers and all that i think that aiden and stab and windows are such such strong stable and smart players that uh, if this does go back to, you know, some sort of a mid, regardless of what the tactical uh, pause, you know, says for us, I think that they will be able to edge this out. 2-0 just map score. I, I don't know if this is bias. Obviously, I play with Windows, but um, I, I do believe in them to have more of the stable mental going into this. I mean... Yeah, like like you said, I don't know. Like it's very it's tough hard. to say. It's, it's and, hard. Yeah, no, it it you have no idea because, like you said, things can be so volatile. Um, I think the teams are discussing right now what's going on because I believe it was number one rocker timed out. Um, but yeah, like you said, um, I mean, 
based on what I heard from Chocolate, he 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 was very confident that he was going to win this game, and they're already down one zero. So oh, wow, you know, I can't I can't guarantee anything, but <laughs> you know, obviously it's not been a yeah, it hasn't been like super clean. So you know, Chocolate definitely needs to make sure he and his team step it up if they want to, uh, you know, win this game. Um, yeah, I've definitely I've been in contact with the team, so I believe they're going to be talking stuff out. And we'll see if stuff happens. Um, they might unpause soon. I'm not 100% sure what's going to happen. Yeah. But yeah, this is definitely a, a technical issue here. Yeah, so for, for sure a technical issue, like you said. Um, I, I mean, having my insider info as well, um, you talked about Chocolate talking to you about feeling super, super confident about this match. Um, I know Windows a lot personally, and a lot of the turmoil, as well as people being gone, I know Fluff is gone, and Fluff was such a major part of the team. Paul gone as well is going to mean that they have a big part of their soldier to go down. But I, I still... I, I really, I'm a believer, right? I, I do think that they do have this in the bag, regardless of the situations that are, you know, given to them. Uh, but it really could go either way, and that's normally what we say as casters, but still, I do think that there is a lot of defining features in those matches, regardless of just, like, you know, what what is happening, the gameplay circumstances on top of that. Um there are some very, very star players, and there's a reason why Classic Mixup was able to make their way to playoffs and only losing one map. And that map, they said, felt like a fluke. So, it, hey, that's just kind of how I'm feeling. Yeah, I mean, though, as you say that, like, they did, they definitely have not been looking as confident or as, like, strong as in the regular season For as they sure. were in playoffs, right? So yeah. it's definitely not, like, I think the... The gap that was between them and the other two top teams, which was Six uh, Eight Club and Class, and um, excuse me, and Zugjug, it definitely shrunk a lot, as you can tell by the fact that Zugjug won two one in the upper bracket finals match. Um, you know, I'm not 100 percent sure what we're going to see, uh, but you know, I, uh, I I think like now that I've been thinking about it, like you say, I I think I'm going to lead towards Classic Mix Up now, but I still. I still don't know. You know, it could just be a complete turnaround um, and 6 Eight Club just starts rolling them or, you know, it could be more of the same or suddenly Class of Mixup starts rolling them. You, you, we have no idea, to be honest. Yeah, it, you know, you're asking me for some, some sort of a solid prediction, but still, this is one of the most 50-50 matches that I've seen. Uh, casting the uh, Zug Jug versus uh, Classic Mixup match, that also just felt like such a 50 50 match i obviously gave a lot of favor towards classic mix up going into these playoffs with such a dominant record but they were upset right even with all of their normal players in the roster it was so so difficult to um you know convert what they needed to feel stable in a lot of scenarios and six hate club being such a dominant seed they they're so good, man. I, I don't know how else to put it. Like they, they are good at TF2. They know what they want to do. They are playing to their playbook exactly, and they're going... It almost feels like they're playing exactly what they have gone off of, just out of what they've seen in their own demo reviews and their own mentor reviews and stuff like that. It, it's, it feels super, super play, playbook for them, and they feel very comfortable tonight. Yeah, I mean... I mean, yeah, I, I'm, I think both. I don't know. Like, I would have thought Classic Mixup was a lot less comfortable, but like Six Hate Club doesn't feel like that. I mean, neither team uh, feels like super uncomfortable or anything. Um, you know, is there any? Is there? I don't know. It's it's very tough to say. I mean, even looking at these scoreboards, and maybe it was a bit more stimulated than I thought initially. But I don't know how. What do you think the pace of this map is going to be for the rest? Uh, I mean, if if we if we are just technically going off of what I expect, which is, um, number one, rocker crashes, and both of these teams are either going to a hold scenario or uh, a last scenario. I think that Goldie Wash really does come down to, you know, the the off classes, which is weird to say, but I think that Goldie Wash is super hard map to convert into last if you're winning mids. 
unless you're maybe G6 or Froyo Tech or some of these top invite teams, you do not have this sort of plan that is going to, uh, one, win you mid, and two, bring you all the way to the enemy team's last and convert that round. So um, I think that we're going to see in the rest of this map a lot of Sniper. Um, and Sniper breaking open these last, I, I, I think this is a common theme among people who are playing these sort of stalemate last is that teams will try to go into it with their normal sack plans and then that doesn't work out and you're 25 minutes into the map and you're like, okay, let's just lose one scout, but he's going to come up Sniper and we're going to try to crack them open on last, try to crack this nut and make some sort of advantage for ourselves. But, I mean, what are you thinking, though? I, I, do you think this is really going to come down to the off class in the last? Do you think this is going to come down to uh, mid conversions? What is your prediction for what is going to be the defining feature of the rest of this map? I I don't know. I feel like it has to be the demos. Like, they've been really the, the, the pacemakers for mm -hmm. both of these teams, and I think they really have to. Um... They really have to make sure both of them, it's like it's really going to come down to them setting the pace and them not flubbing on their bombs, which just happened a few times or things like that. Um, you know. Yeah, I mean, even if the situation worked, I'm sorry about the delays, guys. We are fixing and I'm in the server right now and we're just talking over the teams. We'll hopefully able to get this uh, sorted out soon. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I, I think it's got to be those demos, but I don't know. What do you think? Uh, yeah, kind of like what I said. Um, I think this map, similar to a snake water or similar to a map that is very centric around the last holds, um, it's gonna really come down to, you know, these last, these how you are breaking into the last and how you are able to get to them in this place. I kind of look at goalie wash in two phases, right? You have the med you are able to break into the enemy team second but you have such an advantage pushing into the enemy team second that it's sort of inevitable unless you really screw things up so um the two points right you have the mid you have the last you're going to get to the enemy team's last eventually but it's how both of these teams are able to break into their last without having a round reset so i think we're going to see a lot more sniper sunshine has been really willing to go into the sniper i know tlm himself also favors the sniper as well um be that or aggressive or defensive sniper he only had one time where he was really playing with sniper and that was defensive he got counter sniped by sunshine but on pause going out right now we'll have to see what happens here going into the enemy team's last right now one sack of coming out early it's gonna be two by four on to chocolate getting and chocolate as well gonna be getting two big picks lots of trailing picks as well and it's gonna be in a one round actually on this point, kind of, kind of what I predicted originally with them getting this point. I, I'm curious to see where this, uh, this pause and, or this, uh, this technical pause come out as number one rocker did crash in this. Um, yeah, did, I have. Did they yeah. win mid? You know, that's the that's uh, question. I have. Yeah, I do know, but I'm not going to spoil anything here as we <laughs> go on to. Yeah, I do know what happened, and I'll let you know as soon as we get there. And, you know, about 60 seconds later, but here comes the bomb from Stab early. 2 by 4 goes for a crazy bomb, kills Windows quite early here. And that's a kill from Jebediah onto, uh, excuse me, onto 2x4. But a big bomb from Amity grabs two. Aiden gets another one. Sunshine and Jebel Jiggler get a kill. But the favor the mid goes in favor of Classic Mix Up. Jebel Jiggler is caught behind in the enemy team's big door. That's not great. Kaelin's just going to walk right in and clean that up. And that's going to be a, um, a mid win on the side of Classic Mix Up here. And I wouldn't be surprised if they work their way into second off of those three players. You know, Aiden's just going to be able to trap up the point here. And uh, now that the stuff has happened, I am going to, uh, well, actually, I won't say anything yet, but we'll keep going here as it looks like uh, Six Hate Club didn't have anything happened. Um, no team really decided to go for anything crazy, but something important pause. is, yeah, there was the repause. It was number one rocker who timed out, but something important that Windows let me know is that they have crits and they are at 90% on crits mm. already. We, we'll see what they try to do with this. Yeah, they have to make something work up the scripts. They're getting it now, and they want to use this immediately on Aiden. It's going to be on him to find any sort of fast stickies. First sticky is going to find number one rocker. That is such a huge sticky. He finds Johnny as well. 
And also a nice pipe on the chocolate. That's three picks for Glass because I'm going to work their way into last with. Amity finds the gun. It's going to be two by four. The last soldier alive just on the pipe area. He finds a nice rocket trade onto himself. But that's already everybody dead for the side of this hate club. So now 2 1. Off of that amazing crit use onto Aiden. Aiden finding that first crit sticky onto a no one walker. It's just so, so damn important for them. Yeah, that was uh, that was pretty crazy. I did not expect that crits to go that well. Uh, we're going on to this next mid fight here. Uh, last time, both medics died, and we'll see if both the soldiers are able to get them. Aiden is very low in his own choke. He's actually going to get picked oh off because gosh. Six Hate Club went the other team's side. A huge collapse. The soldiers on class mix up do so much damage. The scouts are able to clean it up, but oh my goodness, that was just an absolute nuke from Seb and Amity. Oh my goodness, that is the that is the mid there, and they're gonna have a nice big Uber. And Windows is back on stock Uber, so there's not gonna be any Christian Indians here, but that's honestly kind of better when you have a full ad and you're pushing into last, not when you're trying to like, you know, catch them off with that crits, uh, you know, unexpectedly. Joe Jigger's got some sticky traps up and going for a little spam, but it's probably gonna back out here. We have a sentry gun going up on the side of Johnny, and 2x4 is building with the uh, escape plan here. And it looks like uh, that full Uber ad is going to come into play. Sunshine get. on Pyro. Yeah, they're not going to get. They're, it's yeah. going to be an Uber push in here shortly. Although 2x4 picks off Jebediah. Hmm. That's a nice pick to get as well. Early into lobby is going to be, two, uh, you know, 2x4 fighting that. So Jebediah is not going to be in the Uber. The Uber is going to be used out immediately. Flashing three players. The soldiers are scouting the demo immediately. So the Uber is already gone for Windows. He might just get cleaned up as he is caught alone. But the Captain alone is going to allow the rest of Plastic Mix Up to get on to the point. They have the scout on there and then bring up the heavy and not jumping onto the point immediately means that all of this fast goalie wash cap time is going to convert around for them. So massive, massive fine for them. Massive, massive conversion off of the, this Uber advantage that they did have. And like you said, having the normal Uber going into the enemy team's last is so, so major for them. So I have to see what they do on doing this mid. It's going to be Amity and 2x4 dueling on the ground as well. Sort of a more neutral mid of people to sort of feeling each other out, poking out, 2x4 taking extremely low, neither med take, taking a lot of damage early, so no real med damage to sort of sack off early, but less the rest of class is going to be walking across, but instead they are punished by the side of 2x4 and Chocolate, finding respective kills, kills under their own, and, and Steb dying as well, such, such major picks, and it's going to be Jebediah, Windows only at 79%, trying to fix his way out from David Door, but 2x4 finds some nice, nice late walking onto him, and Jebediah! Also cleaned up by 2x4. Amazing, amazing finds from 2x4. It's going to be the Mad Scout is super, super delayed. And they're going to be having the second a little bit late for the side of Take Club, but they have all the space to work with in this lobby to make this point their own. Yeah, the, the positioning on uh, Classic Mixup was they just had less high ground, but then they didn't go aggressive when 6 Hate Club was clumped up. And so then they just sort of got the damage positive, got two picks, and then Classic Mixup was just too slow to leave. And that just led into all those dribbling players. Here comes the Uber from Shutter. They don't even use through. They were able to, they were able to milk through Shutter. They still what? have not used. They still have not used. They do drop one before they use. Jellicker got the sentry before the Uber even came out. Low players on the side of six hate club though, and Amity is in secret here. Is gonna get pressured out by Chocolate, who is very low. But the picks go in the favor of Classic Mixup. Oh my goodness, that there's no way that should have happened. What? And now Chocolate gets picked off, and that's a one hole, a hold from Classic Mixup. Oh no, big big blunder by uh by six hate club. Yeah, it looked like a little bit of a weird thing. I don't know if this is a super micro thing to focus on, but um, it looked like the late stickies from Jello Jiggler were not able to hold Placid Mix up out of their left spawn or their right spawn from their perspective. And they were able to barrel out and find the picks that they needed to. Even though that Uber was used out extremely late, they got the uh, really, really early kill. I'm looking for more. Oh my god! Nice shot from Sunshine! What the hell was that headshot? Able to get out through Choke as well. He keeps himself alive, and Amity dead is going to mean that they're going to be able to stabilize here on second now. That was just absolutely absurd. What? It is going to turn into an even Uber situation, and nothing's going to happen off that, but that pick, I believe, just allowed number one Rocker to get Uber. It's going to be even. Sunshine is still on Sniper with Jalo Jiggler. Importantly, there's no second scout, so um, 
excuse me, that's going to be Johnny, is going to have to be a lot more willing to swap around between both doors. It looks like there's going to be, it looks like there was a, a fake play from Big Door, but it looks like uh, Classic Mixup is trying to go choke, and we have another pause. Oh my goodness, but it looks like they're about to press their choke here. Um, and uh, 6A Club has the two soldiers, one above and one on the side, and then, you know, they, they are set up. Yeah, they are really set up right now. I don't know what this pause is coming from exactly. You know, even Uber is for both teams. Classic Mixup has a little bit of the space to work their way into choke from. They have something to worry about. We're just looking at where these players are during the pause. Chocolate above the choke, 2x4 holding it down, and number one, Rocker supporting the players as well. Um, I don't know if this is attack? I... I... It's, it's hard to tell if this is attack or attack. Really, it, it genuinely is. The last one, it did feel like it was more of a tech pause, obviously from the information that you gave us, but this is such a neutral uh, situation for the rest of 6-8 Club. I mean, there's obviously still a lot of time on the clock in terms of the match timer for both of these teams to make some sort of a comeback, to bring home some sort of, some sort of a dominant point lead, but it's it's really hard to tell. Yeah, I have gotten word. I don't want to spoil anything, but this is a tactical pause. I'm not sure what situation is going to be because of it, but it's thank goodness it's not going to be number one cra number one's uh, internet crashing, which you know, that always sucks. <laughs> thank God. Always, yeah, we always see it when those uh, issues get in the way of you know like what's supposed to be an even game, but you know we'll see what happens. Uh, it looks like I mean this looks. It looks very scary for uh, Classic Mixup because of the double soldiers and Sunshine being on Sniper that might allow them to just like, as soon as they realize that this pressure is coming in on Choke, they might even just have Jello, Jiggler, and Sunshine just walk super aggressively and Sunshine could try for a pick. I mean, if you look at the positioning on Classic Mixup, they have nobody looking at Big Door. And if Steb doesn't go back and look at that Big Door, that could be really bad for them. And even nobody's watching Drop Down, this could be very bad for them. Whereas if you look at um, if you look at the side of 6-8 Club, both the doors are being watched. Although, uh, to be fair, for um, Six Hate Club, it's it's a little bit easier because Drop Down and um, and Choke are both in the same location when you're holding it. Here's the unpause. Uh, it looks like the pressure was going to come out from Classic Mixup, but they decide to delay it, and we'll see what happens with this, uh, you know, sniper play and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, Sunshine and Sniper, normally if you're looking into Glow Arch second, you either want to get a second choke or you just want to get this pressure off from Big Door, but they lose Aiden extremely early, and having Aiden dead is so massive. Amity and TLM are going to fall as well, looking for some sort of pressure in that Big Door with a nice headshot bringing out from Sunshine means that the rest of the classic mix-up has to really retreat on their second with only three players alive, including their medic and that, so possibly looking to get out from here. Sunshine already peeking aggressively through the big door area and they are wary of this as well. Windows is not peeking it. With the double soldier bomb, they're looking for any sort of force that they can on Windows and he does force extremely healthily, but just out of fear as well. They want to get something onto number one rocker, but he is holding the Uber for them as well. So six hate club, now they have this Uber there looking into the enemy team's last. This could possibly be something they can convert off of. Yeah, big misplay from Classic Mixup. They they tried to take like an aggressive Uber on Six Hate Club, being ready to use into them, but they just miscalculated and then were split up, and that allowed Six Hate Club to completely milk it. They're getting the time on point already. Amity is in secret, but Jebedi already went down. Amity was the only person <laughs> alive. Another headshot comes through from Sunshine. Kills are going in the favor of Six Hate Club, and that's that round. It is now three to two. It is still in the favor of Classic Mixup, but yeah, I can confirm this was a uh, a tactical pause from Classic Mixup uh, because of that round loss. And we'll see what happens in this sixth mid fight here. Yeah, I mean they're still up one round right now, so and it does make sense to pause off of that. You had such a dominant first half of this map. You had that giant giant crits play to work off of, but. You want to get things reined in, you want to make sure that everything feels stable. Except going in for the early fade bomb, so kind of what I expect from Classic Mix that they, after this pause, they want to go for something a little bit more stable. They don't want to lose anything too early. Amity taking out only 6 HP is going to be finally collecting the bow from this medic, but still, at least so many players on the side of Classic Mix up so low. TLM is going to be taken down, and Windows is caught out in choke as well, so a huge bomb out from 2x4. Finds anything else that he can get onto the main combo, and it's only going to be stabbed the last alive on Classic Mixup on this mid. 
Sorry, Amity as well, getting cleaned up from the bow, but... Uh, th that was the last little hurrah trying to find anything now. So kind of an inverse from what you'd expect after a pause if you're on the side of classic mix-up, right? I mean, you're really, really hoping that this mid weren't fighting, but they chose to play that mid so much more passive than you would really expect, and they... They, they sort of ate all that damage, and... The rest of the 6k club were able to capitalize off that. Yeah, like, it looked like Classic Mix-Up were trying to play passive, but then the soldiers on Classic Mix-Up, like, got a bit aggressive, and then, like, did bombs, took so much damage, and that drew away a ton of heals from the rest of their team, and that really hurt them. Here comes the potential Uber from River, although I think they did spot, yeah, they have spotted Jebedi on Pyro next to River, so they are going to rework. Jebedi has reworked himself over to Shutter, and we'll see if Classic, or 6 k Club is able to adapt, but I think the spotting from Sunshine and Lobby has really helped them. Uh, 2 by 4 kills the dispenser, nice. And actually, Johnny is worked his way into um, into water. Excuse me, 2 by 4 is going to come in at the last minute. They're going to kill Aiden pre-Uber. That's going to be really bad for them. And Gemini is low too. And they even get Johnny back into water. He's on the point right now. They're not even using Uber. Oh. Not, but there's two kills on the side of TLM instead. But Johnny is still not on the point. Stev gets the kill onto Johnny. And it turns into a 4 on 3 somehow. That... They, they had an uber ad and a player ad with the demo and they didn't push off of it but they're still trying to pressure with the three players especially with the huge cap time although sunshine dying to aiden's traps means that they're gonna back out although chocolate does potentially try to get the kill into aiden but does decide to back up and although uh with all that happening two by four society you know what it's time to do an, a weird off class Let's play Spy, and I think this is the first Spy we've seen the entire time. 2x4 has already worked his way into the secret yeah. area here. I, I, and obviously he has a lot of space to work with. There has not been the Spy, there's been the crits that you can sort of expect from sort of the volatile plays, but I don't know if you can really expect some sort of a Spy right now. Especially with just sort of how these lasses have, a lass have been going, there's been a lot more of these quick pushes, but... It's it's a little weird, right? I, I, just sort of seeing the spy. If you're on the side of classic mix up, I don't know if you're really if you're here to the ground with it. Obviously, it's been a little bit too long for the rest of uh, um, the blue team to figure out something out. But they're going in for this force immediately. They pop Ooh. out immediately through shutter. But finally, the Uber coming out from Windows. But such a this late is... late Uber. This is a planned play. 2x4 has not moved from his position. This was their plan. They planned to Uber exchange. 2x4 is still just sitting here. He's relaying what? info to his team, but he is just sitting here. He's not doing a single thing. That's so he's, smart. He's, I mean, he's still sitting here. Like, they got the Uber exchange. It looked like it was going to be bad, but Jebediah barely had to use, though. He did stuff that Uber pretty well, but they barely had to have window use. 2x4 finally decides to go for something. They didn't do any spy checking. 2x4 is trying to work his way up the right spawn. He still hasn't gotten spotted. He's worked his way onto the rim. Oh my goodness, the amount of... They don't even know he's what? on spy. They have no... He used the jump off the what? rim. Oh my goodness, this is so <laughs> nerve-wracking for me. He still hasn't gotten spotted. He's on the barrels. It looks like he's going to decloak any second. Looks like he's waiting for distraction from his teammates, I believe. They have no idea. Here comes the decloak. Now it is. Here comes the decloak. He beats the staff on the windows twice. Oh my goodness. What? <laughs> beef! Oh my god, what a beef spy play! He had that set up so perfectly for him. They went for the even extruder exchange, and he types in chat, Spy fucking sucks! <laughs> I can't believe it! How did he miss that? That's insane! That's actually insane that he beefed that set up from him. Uh, it was so, so beautifully gifted to him on a golden platter. He had the step in his hands, and he fumbles it! I can't believe it, man! I I actually can't believe that he was able to fumble that. So now, going back to this Wait. even over scenario, it's only what? 18 seconds left in the round timer, so they need to figure Club. out something now. 6 Club has had enough. They're on double pyro. They what? have already one pyro on the point. Here comes the Uber exchange from Pyros. I haven't seen the double pyro before. 2x4 <laughs> and Johnny on pyro. Sunshine on the point. But this is just not going in the favor of uh, 6 k Club. They had. Jebediah on heavy, or er, I think that's no, that's uh, no, that's TLM on heavy, and he was just able to be Putus and what? win that for his team. I don't know, like the double pyro is interesting. I, I, I admire the first pyro, but I feel like throwing off another explosive class <laughs> just to go for a second pyro is maybe not needed. Normally, you can just have your one pyro reflect, use on the pyro, and then your scout can cap behind that, and then you can have your two soldiers and demo go really aggressive. But that was a very ballsy move as we go into this uh, seventh mid because there was. It was a stalemate. Don't like this. <laughs>
I can't believe that I have, that was the most unreal one minute of TF2 that I've ever seen in my life, but focusing back on this mid right now, looks at the rest of uh, Six's hate club is playing a little bit more passively, and Classic makes up looking for a lot of the aggressive damage, they find Johnny, they find T by 4 only Gemini going to be down, they have a lot of players on rate HP, but Amity on such low HP, 40 HP, he's going to be going with the enemies dropped and he's looking for anything, but choosing to save his own life as well. Only last play is going to be the soldier up on the blue team. And he does find Windows as Chocolate find the massive bomb that he needs. And he does, does get the medic down. So, red team, they do cap the mid, but they've lost their medic in return. So, if the rest of 6k club that has some sort of uh, plan to get into mid and plan to bring this any bit forward, this is going to be so scary for the rest of Classic Mixup now. Yeah, that's a full Uber ad. Uh... Classic Mixup is also down multiple players, so this is going to make it a lot easier for 6 Hate Club to go through. 2x4 has war worked his way into drop down. He did get spotted by Amity, but there's nobody else at choke. It's just a couple of traps. Johnny just walks through, clears the first traps. There isn't been a demo spam, but normally you can get through that. Normally you need some soldiers up there. 2x4 is still fighting Amity on the ground. There's a double soldier sack. They do get the force onto number one rocker, but they lose two soldiers, and that's going to help um, 6 Hate Club be very aggressive. They're already going to push off that double soldier. Very good aggression from them. They're going to lock out shutter instantly and they're going to take back second as well and aiden is going to have to try to back his way out to last jump he's maybe getting a little bit of chase but decides better of it amity has stuck their way into forwards and is just sitting there although i think uh six k club is aware they have traps in the door and i think they're not really spawning it though yeah they're not really spawning it but it looks like amity actually just decided to back uh, spawn anyway so nothing really happened there it's a uh, about a 30 percent uber at, but uh classic mix up has no plans of pushing out they have they a sentry wanna. set up yeah and i wouldn't be surprised if they see heavy sniper and pyro as well once this sentry gets level three yeah for sure i mean the ubers now finally do even out so up to six hate club to figure out something different i mean it was a little bit of a that last hold that they have last time was some of the most wild things i've ever seen uh just in terms of the plans going into it but um uh, i don't know it's kind of up to them to figure out what they want to do here we're now going into banning time three two in favor of classic mix up so now it is up to six hate club to figure out what they need to do to get these two rounds off of them they have uh the last push in their hands sending johnny over into water might just sort of be the early pressure that they need but they do have amity up on rim sort of aware of this so it's gonna be johnny running up into water area looking for the pressure on the giant not gonna find anything too much else other than that but now the uber being used out from windows from the force from two by four major sat from him super super star players are both of the soldiers on the side of six hay club and game that uber is going to mean that even though they're down to it's so hard to push out of goalie wash last that uh the rest of six hay club has this full uber and their spawners to work with that was really well played from them. They had the soldier spam uh, from Lobby at that very nasty angle. They spammed Amity off, and that made Amity have to back up and need some help from another player. And that allowed the soldier to just get right in and get the very nice two rocket onto Windows. He didn't get a good surf. Although, Windows has already built up 75% Uber. If 6 hate Club don't go fast, they're not going to have an Uber ride. They have Johnny on Pyro, not another Pyro. It's already 95%. It's evened out, and they don't even realize. Johnny takes 100 damage early. Here comes the uber but it is even windows has done a tremendous job of using aiden gets a kill into johnny steb gets traded out but tlm is on the pudas and gets another kill into sunshine uh not on brass piece unfortunately but of course it's going to be a, a 514 here and it's just going to turn into another just situation of building out an even uber because i think aiden is just setting up some aggressive traps and what mix up just has no plans they have yeah i mean they're like they're confident saying one round sitting on last they want to get back to this mid fight um, I was saying yeah. what because there were random stickies all the way on uh, classic mix of last over on Windows as the uh, you know Jell Jiggler was leaving. It looked a little bit scary for them because well, they finally right? reached all the sticks. Yeah, it was it was two by four it was super is hiding. Similar. Two by four is hiding in a way. He what? jumps down right on top of Aiden's head and doesn't. Get... How did they? How did you not see Aiden? What? This is the most. Aiden just just like, what? There's a soldier in front of me. <laughs> this is the most goofy goober ass TF2 match I've seen in a minute now. We have a minute remaining on the round timer. Ubers have completely evened out. So we might just see some sort of another round reset. With, um, Hustin mix up, it still has the round advantage to work with, but Sunshine does get a nice, hedge, a nice headshot off onto Amity. He hits a little body shot off onto Steb. Not able to get any kills off of this, but looking for this pressure with the sniper. Like I said before, this is kind of like Goliosh comes down to 
Jello Jiggler does get the the kill on the sentry gun with the pipes. Here comes a bomb from 2x4, but it does get a bit reflected. Sunshine gets a nice headshot onto Amity. Jello Jiggler gets another kill, and they actually get the force with all the pressure because they got Johnny into water on Scout. Johnny is going to get picked off by Aiden, but <laughs> nice. even with, they have an Uber egg. They're actually just going to walk right back in. Oh my goodness, they have no Scouts on this push. Jello Jiggler is already on the point with the stickies. Big bomb from Amity. Aiden is also there. Uh... Jebediah gets a kill and defends the point. Aiden gets another Sunshine! kill. Sunshine! Sunshine with another headshot into Stub. The kills are very even. It's a 2v1, but Johnny is a respawning scout here. And even though the two players on Class and Mixup are low, actually, as I say that, Johnny goes right back in. Aiden is not there. Oh, but he barely gets there and uh, doesn't get there in time. And that's going to be the stellated round. Uh, both teams are having fun with this, I can tell from the, uh, the chat talk, but this is yeah. a very chaotic from both teams. We're seeing some interesting strats here on Gullywash. Yeah, I mean, the force is out into the sniper, uh, oh no, the, the sniper, the spy beef sab, the spy play, the sort of late plays into the enemy team's water, trying to get anything they can. It's just been super, super brawly. But looking at on this mid as well, TLM finds this super, super early pick on uh, Jello Jiggler, so no demo for the side of. Oh my god, 2x4! Insane rockets on the windows! He does get the kill onto him, so now it's number one rocker running for his life. Amity wants up to the enemy team's drop down. He does find the light kill onto number one rocker, so both medics dead, but a full wipe now for classic. Uh, for. I'm sorry, Six is Hate Club means a classic mix up has mid. They're probably going to get second as they have players up in the enemy team's river, the enemy team's uh, lobby already. So, you know, complete inverse with these sort of even Ubers going into last. So, we'll really have to see what they do have crafted up because I feel like a lot of the points that Classic Mixup has had, um, at least they've achieved in this match, means that they they were really going in off of super, super strong advantage or these big Uber scenarios. Obviously, they had that crits win, but um, it, now it's kind of up to them to figure out what they're sort of doing on this sort of even scenario. I mean, it is ad for them. I don't know if they recognize that because it doesn't really feel like I would both nets dying on mid, but... Um, hey, what's the crits? What? crits again! Kills number one rocker. Windows does go down to chop the bomb, but Stev walked his way into water beforehand trying to distract him with double soldier ones. Aiden gets the kill onto the gun again, but the players on classic mixup are just too low. Chocolate with a very nice reaction, instantly two rocketed windows, and that's going to lead to the, uh, no wonder it was a little bit of ad. We were surprised there, but it, it was ad because of that crits here. And looking again, um, windows is, uh, back on stock this time, nothing crazy. And, uh, you know, it's back on this even uber situation. I mean, it is 20% ad for um, Six Hate Club, but I doubt they want to push it. I mean, they do only have a sniper, so they could potentially push it. They have Chocolate hiding here inside of the lockers, and they have Sunshine scoped up in a very nasty angle in River. We'll see if they're able to get through. Sunshine just grabs TLM right at the start, and they're going to have to play it very safe. Although Sunshine actually thought he had to leave, but Jell Chickler has complete control of this upper area, and he's just going to work his way right back in, and is going to hold this angle again. There's five people on Classic Mixup here. They're just just waiting for their spawner, who is TLM, and he's just going to swap right onto Sniper, and it's going to be a Sniper versus Sniper. Yeah, for sure. I mean, now you have TLM on the Sniper. What is this? Is this the mythical third pause? Do you... I, I mean, obviously, I, I don't know how the rules technically apply with a, uh, a tech pause can, uh, compared to a tech pause or anything like that, but... Yeah, Sorry. in terms of... In terms it's of pauses, trouble. in terms of pauses, there's no distinction. So each team only gets two pauses. Actually, oh my goodness, it looks like the other team has a tech issue again. Uh, or oh Six my Club gosh. has a tech issue again. I really hope this isn't a a big deal. I really hope it's not number one rockers internet crashing again. <laughs> I really really hope because oh that is so gosh. unfortunate if that does happen. Um, uh, I gonna keep communicating with these teams just to make sure we don't need any uh, crazy interventions hopefully the pause isn't too long but yeah i mean this has definitely been like uh, a much different game it turned it turned slow then it was fast again and then it just went right back to stalemates and crazy plays like these have been some insane plays <laughs> yeah that have been happening yeah they really have been i mean the ways that teams have broken up in these last either just going for these spy sniper plays as well as just the multiple crits now from classic mix-up they were able to catch off the enemy team's medic but not able to convert the second time off of that 
means that they it seems a little bit of a sort of a flounder but you do have to go for some some sort of these plays we'll have to see once the uh, teams do choose to unpause regardless of how that pause was i would love to know more information from you mr 17 about uh you know exactly what it is entailing but I still feel that this is really going to start slowing down, Mission except for these mids, right? Goalie wash mid is goalie wash mid, right? You are stuck in these doorways, um, whether you are choosing to leave or not, or whether you're choosing to go for these bombs or not. It is still so, so damn committal for what you're choosing to do right now. So if this is a, uh, a, a tactical Mission pause, then... I'm sort of imagining this is going to reset to a mid scenario where both of these teams are going to feel each other out and with classic mix up with one round advantage, you can't help but imagine that this might just be their mid to win. Yeah, I have gone confirmation. It wasn't anything huge. It looks like two by four's internet died, so it's not gonna be anything crazy. Two by four two? Yeah, well at least it wasn't a medic job, because like yeah. as as impactful as a player crashing if a, if a medic crashes you know especially with full uber that can just like instantly turn the tide around you know um so yeah uh in terms of like the play style here i i still like now it's it's a sniper re sniper i do slightly favor sunshine on this because i think sunshine's gotten a lot of great headshots yeah but i mean t don't count tl amount he is an advanced highlander sniper i wouldn't be surprised if he's still able to pick stuff up even with sunshine's uh, consistency tonight. He's gotten a lot of great headshots to help out his team. But, I mean, if we look at this hold right now, it looks like the gun is just going up. I think, excuse me, if I look at this, yeah, there, it looks like, um, Johnny has set up a level one gun here, probably about to build that up to a higher level. Um, let me see, but it looks like they, if to, it looks like they're potentially looking for a backup. We'll see, hopefully. Um, uh, hopefully, hopefully, two by four is able to get back in, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, I really hope he is able to get back in soon because, regardless of what these pauses are, um, you know, are from originally, it still is going to mean that the momentum is going to be sort of taken out of the sails for, you know, what whichever team, right? I mean, if you have a lot of momentum and aggression working off of, it and you're keeping the other team on their toes, then having pauses like this can really really just be a big detriment to you because you have to imagine that regardless of what's happening both teams have the second to say okay what is going wrong here and how can we fix it and everybody has these you know these adaptions that they can really make and i, w I would love to see um you know more aggression being taken pushing out of blast obviously that's something that i can just hope for generally on gully wash but i don't know if i'm going to see it but um still i would love to see some more volatile plays than just choosing to reset every single last right um i can only hope for so much but that would be my goal for this is how are you going to adapt on top of this other than just sort of you know making a more dominant mid plan <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm not sure how you adapt at this point. I mean, like the the mids have been like so back and forth. I think they've been favoring classic mix up just in general. And mm -hmm. now we're like seeing um excuse me, we're seeing six hate club on the back foot because um classic mix up just obviously they're you know, six hate club is on their la their own last and don't get me wrong, like even if it's a strong even if it's like an even hold, like like if um excuse me if six hate club lose this hold they are out they are eliminated in third place so classic mix up just needs to win one more round whereas six hate club has to win this map so they have to get to four rounds and then they also have to win um uh excuse me um sunshine so sunshine it's not too. like it's going to be a free game yeah okay i mean sunshine if they really are able to bring it to this it's going to be uh, like I was saying, on the number one rocker cast, and we like saying this a lot, it's going to be a schlobber knock here. It's going to be a lot of a fist fight, right? A little bit more than uh, Goalie Wash overall. I mean, Goalie Wash is just a fist fight on these mids, but um, there's a lot more volatility that can happen on these mids. Um, so it'll be a big time to see what these teams have if they're, if, um, you know, 
Six Hand Club is able to clean up Goalie Wash for them. Last thing, though, I do want to add, while we have time in this pause, I do want to uh, plug a little bit of Fireside stuff for y'all. Um, obviously, uh, go give the Fireside cast Twitter a follow. I, I beg you guys, give us a follow there. We post a lot of great posts on there. Uh, Fireside YouTube as well. We put up a lot of interviews from invite players at the most recent LAN. There's some really, really interesting discussion. I know CO did an amazing job with those interviews. I genuinely enjoyed watching every single one of those. So if you haven't seen those casts, go check them out. Uh, on top of that as well, we have the Fireside membership as well. Uh, you can get a VIP badge on our channels, uncut Fireside content pretty much immediately as soon as it is uploaded, guides to production, as well as other videos that are coming out from us as well. So if you're interested in either learning production, learning the casting side of TF2, it is a great place to start. And it also does support us as well and supports what we are doing here as well on Fireside Cast and Fireside Cast 2. Um, I, I do appreciate you guys for hopping over to Fireside Cast 2 to watch this match with us tonight. I know there's different divs going on. There's Highlander going on, but... Uh, you guys chose tonight to come watch us play some IM playoffs, and uh, I know I appreciate it, and I can't speak for you, I'm 17, but I know you appreciate uh, this more wide coverage on these different divisions, because these have been some damn hype matches for us to watch tonight. Yeah, it's great to see, because like, even though Invite is going to be like a lot higher skilled, it's not like these players don't have experience, you know? Even yeah. in like division in IM, it's not even like it's the the one of the middle divisions along with main like it's uh the third division and then the highest the sixth is invite it's not like these players aren't skilled you know they multiple mul i mean multi they all easily have thousands of hours in the game and probably at least a few hundred hours in competitive uh alone just on map time for most of them and none of these guys are inexperienced you know uh like, as much as I say, like, some are more experienced than others, because, like, Gel Jiggler has done some playing on Scout and Soldier in main, and uh, Chocolate's been, you know, a top IM demo for a while. Like, it's not like it's not like any of these players are really inexperienced. All of these players are very solid, so it's not like, you know, any one of these players could easily turn the tide in any single fight. Yeah, I really do think so. Uh, I personally would love to see this go to a map 5, even though we are at almost hitting the 1 a.m. Eastern time zone, which is the only real time zone, in my opinion, time as well. So very late for a lot of these players, but um, this goalie watch has been a lot of a fist fight. Uh, these mids have been so, so back and forth, like you were mentioning before. Um, it looks like Classic Mixup has, has had the edge just recently in these last two mids but even before that as well they were losing a lot including windows um you know just from these bombs from either uh two by four or from chocolate as well so uh regardless of how this mid goes and regardless of how this last push goes i still think that there is a lot of hope for um you know six eight clubs to get something done here yeah, it's not like it's over, you know. We've seen a lot of struggling on um uh we've got a a lot of teams struggling or whatever, but it looks like uh I think we're about to unpause here shortly. I believe we're going to have a quick repause again um to let uh so a sub come in for two by four. Unfortunately, really? the internet is really yeah, coming in so it looks like it's going to be fist coming in on so oh i mean fist um, himself is a very very strong player um i i know i see him a lot in um i think excuse me uh i think fist himself has been playing in the im division and as well as playing in a lot of pugs getting a lot of game time in himself so uh i expect a lot from him if even if he is going to be the ringer in for um six hate club Funny part is, is that the last time that we classic we cast a classic mix up, there was a lot of volatile ringers, and the ringers, uh, being that two by four, were able to actually bring the rounds and the maps on from them, uh, regardless of you know if that's the person that you're bringing in super super late at night, uh, bringing them in in this tense scenario where your your backs against the walls, um having to just really really work your way out of a hard scenario i mean you're down one uh point right now in banning time so 
you gotta hope for anything you can get right now. Uh, yeah, it looks like we're just having, unfortunately, a bit of a alias and issues. We have to keep doing a couple of repauses to fix this off. Um, I Wolf. think they're fixing, it looks like they're fixing, they're finally getting go, they're, I think they're finally getting going. Oh, there was the repause, nice, so I think he's going to be able to rejoin, I hope. I hope. Let's see. I really hope, yes, he joined the team. Thank goodness. Yay! Um, so it looks like we're going to get this going any second now. Uh, just got to do a quick little alias really quickly, and then I think we'll be ready in just a few seconds. Um, and, yeah, we should be getting going. I, It's going to be, remember, we're on uh, Classic Mix-Up. All they have to do is win one more round, and then they're fine. And or Then they win the entire series and move up to grounds. And Six Click Club has to beat this, and it looks like we're about to go live here. We are going live now. Take it away. Oh, I mean, looking into this last right now, still, we have Classic Mix of they're working their way into the enemy team's last. They have the ball in their court, and they have the player. Um, I don't even know if this was before or prior, but um, the player to work off of. Regardless, so Stab looking into River right now. Gonna look under the enemy team's sniper, but unable to find it. Stab going to be met with the Demo Man as well, so not able to get in himself. And they do have Jebediah looking for anything but Sunshine before then. Finds a kill early on to Aiden. That's gonna be Jebediah finding on the sniper kill. A pick on to, I believe that was um, a soldier as well. Wow, actually, if you look at this right now, I think 2x4 has been crashed for crashed for a while because he's just sitting in secret uh oh they're gonna have to hold this off somehow they have to hold it off for a while that's gonna be pretty crazy i don't know if they're gonna be able to do it um uh we'll see if they are able i mean like i i guess i guess we know since the game got paused they probably are gonna be able to but it doesn't mean anything crazy was gonna happen um let's see what happens we have uh, Jebediah going for a peek. He is going to pick off Johnny on NG, and that's going to be a big pick. That century from Johnny is very low. All it needs is just one more spam rocket or, like, spam sticky from, um, Classic Mixup, and they're going to be able to get the gun. There's Aiden getting the gun, but Chaco grabs a kill onto Stev. That is huge from him. Uh, Sunshine grabs a kill onto Amity with the sniper. That's going to help them hold, though, a lot, and it's going to just turn into a, um... A, um, excuse me, an even Uber here situation. I think Classic Mixup is going to have to go for some sort of Uber exchange. Yeah, they they must have to, right? I mean, you have 45 seconds ticking down on the round timer. Um, so hopefully you can get something going on this even Uber exchange. They're not really postured too far forward right now um, for anything, but... Um, so you have to try for something with 30 seconds remaining of the round timer. It's goalie wash, you're not too really worried about the enemy team pushing onto the second and keeping the round alive for you, but... Um, I see Step right now on the paint train, looking for any sort of cap time. It's gonna be Jebediah and Windows on the point, using it early on the pyro. They're looking for any sort of space that they can get, and the gun does go down from the spam from the Amity and Step. They're looking for anything they can get right now, but with the Uber faded and the Uber finally used up from number one, it's gonna be a Jebediah Townhouse on the point, getting the kill, and the win actually goes over to Classic Mixup. That is going to be game decided right now, just off of this crazy, crazy Uber play on the even exchange for them. Uh, uh, what? That is such a weird way to win your official end. Punch your ticket now to Grand Finals. Now, Grand Finals is going to be a gigantic massive reset between uh plastic mix-up and zug jug with zug jug with a one map advantage so i am very very excited to see what this comes from yeah that was quite a good game i i think um i don't know if we'll even see the same roster we, we may not even see the same uh roster form uh mix up on uh, on thursday again uh just like we uh just like we said it's now mix up moving on to grand finals they are down one map um already because of the upper bracket advantage but it's still going to be uh it's a best of five with a uh, one map advantage so uh mix up only, still has to win three maps whereas like jack has to win two um taking a look at these logs here it looks like again aiden was just absolutely farming although this time chocolate was definitely doing a lot better but Jill jimbo was unfortunately just it looks like aiden was just kind of winning unfortunately that really helped um classic mix up's chances although sunshine was going pretty nuts on sniper in this game and um they were able to get um fist in a uh, six eight club war right at the last second but it did not help them unfortunately and it still just led to the game ending and six eight club is going to end up in third 
place this season. Oh, man, what a rough way to go out, though. I mean, they had a lot of uh, points where they could have made their way back into that second map overall, right? I mean, they they looked so, so, so far on the back foot for the second half of that. Um, you know, rest of Plaza of Mixup was really able to edge out the point victory uh, you know, from just the crits play alone, getting their uh, third point, or actually, I think it was their second point that they were able to achieve. Uh, but still, amazing way for them to actually convert these last uh, on goalie washers to such such a difficult point to crack. Um, that last round overall, I mean, you can look at it as a look at it as a fluke, but still a very very good way to mix up what you are doing and being able to. Uh, convert this round overall. Yeah, I mean, that was quite a crazy game. Um, I'm glad to see it. It did only last in two maps. Unfortunately, there were some of those tech issues, but I do want to mention that even with that, we will be having um, the grand finals will be on Thursday, I believe, starting Ooh. again at 1030 Eastern. It will be casted on Fireside Cast, the first Fireside Cast, and will be myself and Theory Why on that cast. Um, it might be moved 30 minutes earlier just because of how late it is, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens there. But it was a it was a great night of casting tonight. Um, happy to have been here. Um, any shout outs for you? Yeah, I mean, obviously, we kind of want to get off, uh, got to get off line to give our uh, poor producer and everybody else a little bit of a break here. But um, big shout out to Windows XP. That is my homie right there. That is the guy who secretly, I don't know if it's even secretly at this point. I have been rooting for this entire damn season. Um, I am so happy that he has made his way to Grand Finals and the rest of Classic Mix Up making their way. Uh, two grand finals, even with two ringers, you know, losing their big main caller, so so huge from them. So, uh, very very happy to see them in grand finals. Um, other shouts go to uh, Zach. I am sad I haven't been able to cast a lot of these late late finals with him, but that has been my goat co commentator. Love love the, love the guy. I learned how to commentate with him, and he is. I, you know, no hate to you, but he's my by far my favorite co-commentator, and I hope to be casting matches with him very, very soon, either in AM or in IM. Anything from you, though, just in terms of shout-outs, any sort of late shout-outs either to um, teams, anyone on Fireside, anyone that you're looking to really shout-out here? Yeah, shout-outs to all the IM teams for playing, despite, you know, any technical issues that there may have been or any issues like that. Shout out to all the teams for playing this season so far. There's still one more match, of course, but shout out to those teams for playing. Um, shout out to Pika on production. Uh, producers always on some heroes, you know, whereas casters, we get to go like back and forth. They have to constantly be doing stuff and they have to watch like mostly in first person. And we get to watch in uh, third <laughs> yeah. person to make everything a bit easier, which is very convenient but yeah shout out to uh pika shout out to theory see you on thursday and shout out to all the viewers as well thank you all for watching tonight and we'll see you with uh, I, there might be some cast going on tomorrow i'm not 100 percent sure but we will see you definitely at least on thursday much uh, have love a good night. yeah yeah have, have a great a night, night everybody